Club. <laughs> yes, right. Crazy stuff. You want to beat the villain? You got to be smarter to beat the villain. Then you have to be the better villain. Stefan is not going to stop until he gets what he wants. Say goodbye to your family, Klaus. I know my brother better than anyone, and right now I don't have a clue how far he's willing to take us. I'm the hybrid. I shall be killed. Destroying Klaus is all I've left. You had me. Well, crazy or not, that kind of love never dies. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Luke, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're ready to sink your teeth into this one. <laughs> I really need to come up with new vampire puns, but I have been doing a deep dive series into the Vampire Diaries. We are currently on season three. So this series is where I recap the plot of the Vampire Diaries. We go in chronological order and we do a deep dive into not only the plot, but also the characters, their relationships, the mythologies, plot holes, and just my general opinion on the show. I've been a fan of the Vampire Diaries pretty much since it first started airing around 2009 and I rewatch it every year. So talking about it here on my YouTube channel is just a buttload of fun and you guys like it and I like it and it's a lot of fun. So if you have not checked out my previous videos covering season one and season two, the playlist will be linked down below. I've also posted two videos so far on season three. We are doing five parts for season three of The Vampire Diaries because it is kind of widely known in the fandom as the best season of The Vampire Diaries and I do agree with that. My personal favorite is season two but I do think that like in terms of storylines, villains, like characters, everything that goes on, The Vampire Diaries really peaked at season three. It's where it's at. So I want to like delve deep into it and that's why we're doing five parts for this season. So if you haven't already watched parts one and two, definitely go check those out so you're all caught up. Those cover the first part of the season. So from the premiere to the mid-season finale, episode one to episode nine. And we have three more parts left covering season three of the Vampire Diaries. Today's video will be covering four episodes, episodes 10 to 13. And this chapter is self-titled Revenge, Repercussions, and Reunions. And along with that, if you don't know, I also do post videos on my Patreon where we actually watch scenes together. I react to them and break them down. Scenes and storylines relating to like specific characters characters or relationships. So if you want to check out my Patreon for more content, the link is just in the description. Now, before we get into the video, a few caveats. As a reminder, this series is for anyone. Those of you who have watched The Vampire Diaries is like a trip down memory lane, as well as those of you who haven't, if you just want to know what happens in this really amazing convoluted show that went on for like eight years. And I will not be spoiling things as we go ahead. We spoil them as it comes, we go in chronological order. I also, on top of this mind map, include clips so you have like visual aids so you know what's going on. And in terms of the mind map, just a little refresh as to like all the symbols and such. So when it comes to the strings, we have three different colors. The blue strings indicate genetics, so like familial relationships. And then we have the red strings, which indicate romantic connections, past, present, or future. And this can be like hooked up, dated, in a relationship, what have you. But in terms of like the breaks, so when we have a line pointing from one character to another, that means that there is like flirtations, there's like potential stuff going on, but it hasn't actually happened yet. When we have a break in the red line, of which we had three breakups in the last video, that means that the couple has broken up. And then of course, when we have a solid red line, which I actually don't think we have a solid red line on the board currently. Everyone is broken up. No one is currently together. But when we do have a solid line, it means they're actively together. Now, when it comes to the green strings, these are going to start becoming really important, especially in part five, the final part. These indicate which vampire has turned and another human into a vampire so that's like a vampire bloodline thing now when it comes to our symbols i do have a key here for you to refer back to if you are ever like curious because there are a lot of like supernatural characters in the show obviously so we've got our witch symbol which you know we've got the bennett family over there we've got doppelganger symbol for elena and Catherine. we've got the ghost symbol for like all of the ghosts on the other side like anna and vicky and whatnot we have the hybrid symbol which currently we just have for klaus because because he's the og hybrid and he successfully has turned tyler into a hybrid so now he is the symbol we have the vampire Empire symbol which of course a lot of our characters have that and we have our werewolf symbol which currently no one really has because Tyler had it but now he's a hybrid but yeah that's the werewolf symbol we've got some de deceased characters with that in the Lockwood family we also have this symbol to indicate the original vampire so this is like the first ever vampire family and we've got this symbol to indicate the founders council there really should be one there for Damon and Rick but I actually didn't print enough but yeah they're in the founders council as well as like Carol Lockwood and Liz Forbes and then we've got the X which indicates deceased characters it's a supernatural show a lot of people die as you can see and then we finally have our question mark which indicates characters that are like a mystery to the plot or characters that have yet to be introduced so that's everything you need to know about the mind map and before we get into our recap of episodes 10 to 13 let's do a refresh as a reminder of what happened in the last two videos of course make sure you watch those if you haven't so you're caught up but I know it's been like a month since the last one so I wanted to refresh your memories so let's get into previously on the vampire diaries so our main plot points from 
the previous nine episodes of season three of the Vampire Diaries is Stefan had obviously left town at the end of season two to save Damon's life because he had a werewolf bite and Klaus's blood was the only cure. So he left town with Klaus and was on a bender for three months while Damon and Elena were trying to track him down and find him. And why Klaus had Stefan along with them is because he actually used to be besties with him over in the 1920s and Stefan was actually romantically involved with his sister, but Klaus had compelled him to forget all of this because originals can compel other vampires. But then he eventually makes him remember and he basically just wants to be besties with him, have him be his wig man, and he's taking him all along the eastern seaboard of the states to find werewolves so he can turn them into hybrids. However, every time he finds werewolves and tries to turn them, they keep failing. So he goes to Chicago to see an old witch of his to figure out why this is happening. However, Stefan knows why this is happening, and that's because Elena, the doppelganger, was supposed to die in Klaus's Sun and the Moon ritual as a sacrifice, but she actually survived. It's really convoluted. But Stefan's trying to keep this a secret from Klaus, and he's also trying to keep Damon and Elena away from him. So they keep trying to find him, and eventually Elena does make contact with Stefan, and he basically tells her, that part of my life is over. I don't want to be with you. I don't want to come home. Leave me alone. So he hurts her feelings to keep her safe and protect her and keep her away, but also because we know Stefan is really struggling with the guilt because he is a vampire who was always feeding on animals because because he doesn't like to hurt innocent humans, but he does have that ripper gene. He's like a bloodaholic and Klaus is using that to his advantage and manipulating him to break him down. And throughout the process of Damon and Elena trying to bring Stefan back home, they go through a lot of ups and downs together because Damon is in love with Elena, but she's obviously in love with his brother. So he's trying to be respectful of his brother, but he also is like making moves on Elena and they keep fighting. They're just going through a lot of tumultuous activity. And at one point they have such a big fight because Elena is not okay with Damon essentially being a vampire and he's like stop trying to turn me into Stefan so he leaves town with Catherine who has been like following Klaus and Stefan because she's trying to figure out a way to kill Klaus because obviously he's been running after her for 500 years ever since she evaded him trying to break the sun and the moon curse back in the day and evaded her fate which Elena obviously came to so she leaves town with Damon to find a vampire that is entombed named Michael and he is Klaus's father the original vampire who he is terrified of because he's been chasing him for years and years until he was entombed and he he is the vampire who hunts vampires. So he thinks vampires are an abomination. He wants to kill his children, especially Klaus, because Klaus is a bastard. He is a result of his of Michael's wife having an affair, so it's not actually his son. So yeah, that's why Damon has left town with Catherine to find Michael to put an end to Klaus. But while Damon is out of town, Klaus gets really suspicious of Stefan, along with the help of his sister, who has really good like intuition when it comes to Stefan, because they used to be together and she can tell when he's lying. So Klaus takes Stefan back to Mystic Falls, to the Mystic Falls High School on senior prank night, where he finds Elena and sees that she is still alive and a lot of chaos ensues in this episode with a lot of our characters it's a really pivotal episode season three episode five the reckoning so Klaus keeps elena hostage and fights with stefan over him lying about her being alive and lying that he doesn't care about his family back home he actually compels stefan to stop fighting him and do as he says and he compels stefan that when a timer clock because they're in a gym goes down from 20 minutes to zero he needs to feed on elena until she dies so it's really high stakes also in this episode Klaus finds tyler and feeds him his blood and kills him and tells Bunny that if she doesn't figure out a way to save his hybrids then Tyler will die. So in the previous episodes we also got into a lot of the other side where like the ghost star so it's like a supernatural purgatory and Bunny has to communicate with the original witch the witch who put the hybrid curse on Klaus who is actually his mother because the original vampire family were witches before their mother turned them into vampires right it's a whole thing do the required reading anyway the original witch tells Bunny that the reason that Klaus's hybrids can't survive is because Elena was supposed to die in the ritual but Klaus, knowing how much the original witch hates him, does the exact opposite of that and feeds Elena's blood to Tyler, and it makes Tyler Klaus's first successful hybrid. So yeah, the original witch who put the curse on him made it so that in order for him to break it and get his hybrid side that was dormant, because his father was a werewolf, that the doppelganger had to die. But if she died, then he couldn't make any hybrids because she'd be dead. But now that she's alive, he can use her blood to make hybrids. So it's a big fat loophole. And Klaus wants to drain Elena of her blood. And Damon goes to save her from the hospital. He tries to stop him, but then he's like, we found your daddy, Michael. He's coming to town. So, so Klaus gets scared and leaves. And Damon saves Elena from dying by having all of her blood drained out of her. We also know now that because Klaus's blood turned Tyler into a hybrid, he is sired to him because he like saved him from having to turn into a wolf every full moon because that was like crippling. So now he has to do everything Klaus says against his will. He doesn't have a choice. It's like a stronger form of compulsion because you can't even take Ravain to avoid it. And that really puts a strain on his relationship with Caroline and they actually end up breaking up. Bonnie also 
also breaks up with Jeremy because on the other side, he was like cheating on her with his ghost girlfriend, Anna. Messy boots galore. The way that Elena and Stefan like kind of officially break up is Klaus compels Stefan to turn off his humanity. And he really tries to fight having to hurt Elena, but Klaus is just like, turn it off, iconic scene. So Stefan turns off his humanity, which is like a switch for vampires where like they become full predatory. Like they don't care. They don't have any human emotions. So he feeds on Elena and that's like, the end of their relationship like she tries to kind of like get his bestie Lexi when the ghosts are all in town to help turn his humanity back on doesn't quite work so their relationship is over but Stefan has had to stay in town because he's been compelled by Klaus to watch over Elena he calls her a human blood bag it's really not good <laughs> now this all leads eventually to the mid-season finale episode 9 of season 3 homecoming where Elena Stefan and Damon lure Klaus back to town with the help of his sister Rebecca because she now wants him dead because she found out that he killed their mother and the help of Michael but like they're, it's just such a convoluted plan, okay? There's people going against each other. Elena ends up daggering Rebecca, which like puts an original vampire into a slumber because she doesn't trust that she's not gonna break down and change her mind and save Klaus's life. And then Stefan ends up stopping Damon from killing Klaus with the white oat stake that Michael was gonna use on him. So then Klaus ends up using that stake to kill Michael. And then he tells Stefan that he is finally free of his compulsion because he saved his life and helped him kill his father. But Damon and Elena are like so confused as to why Stefan would do this because if Klaus has died, then his compulsion would wear off anyway. But then we see that Catherine was actually pretending to be Elena in this episode as part of Damon's plan, and Klaus had told her, thinking she was Elena, that if something's going on and he dies, he's already ensured that his hybrids, which he created when he was out of town, are going to kill Damon. So Catherine tells Stefan that, and that kind of like triggers his humanity to come back on because he doesn't want his brother to die, obviously. So he ends up doing this to save Damon's life, but Damon and Elena don't know this. Catherine leaves town and Stefan ends up stealing Klaus's coffins. So like I mentioned when it came to Rebecca being daggered there's currently no way to kill original vampires without the white oak stake but you can dip a silver dagger into white oak ash and plunge it into their heart which puts them into a slumber. It doesn't work on Klaus because of his werewolf side but he keeps all of his family in coffins daggered and carts them around the world with him because he was waiting till he killed his father to bring them back to life. So it's quite ballistic obviously daggering your family and carrying them around in coffins and Stefan ends up stealing Klaus's family, stealing the coffins for revenge because he's like, you took everything from me, Klaus. You ruined my life. So that's where we are presently. And you know, when it comes to Klaus keeping his original family in coffins, I sometimes have to wonder if they're like in turmoil or if they're getting the best sleep of their life. Because I, for one, I'm obsessed with sleep. It is so healing. But getting really good sleep is so difficult and it's so important for your health. And I've really improved my sleep lately. And so can you, because I'm coming in clutch with the sponsor of today's video, Manta Sleep. So I've got quite a few issues when it comes to falling asleep, one of which being light. I can cannot fall asleep unless I'm in pitch black and I've tried so many eye masks in my time and they're just so uncomfortable always pressing on your eye digging into the side of your head making you all sweaty and that's if they even stay on all night and most of those flimsy eye masks don't even keep the light out and truly Manta Sleep's eye mask solved all of those issues for me. I've been using their Manta Sleep Pro eye mask for about a month now they block out 100% of light I was really sick last week and I was actually able to nap during the day in pitch black it was heaven. The way that the sleep mask is designed the c-shaped eye cups on the mask put no pressure on your eyes and the mask straps around your head with soft materials so it doesn't dig in and it doesn't move and it's even comfortable for side sleepers like me. The advanced material used for the mask is fully adjustable including the eye cups you can move them fit your face perfectly and they are designed with material that ventilates for unmatched breathability. And Manta Sleep has a variety of other eye masks for whatever your needs may be including a silk mask, a weighted mask, a cooling mask, a steam mask and a mask with built-in bluetooth for those of you who listen to white noise or other relaxing sounds when you're going to sleep. You spend a third of your life sleeping and sleep is so important and even sometimes you just need a nap to recharge. And Manta Sleep is pro nap and enables better life with better sleep. I've tried so many different sleep masks and sleep products and in my opinion Manta Sleep definitely has the best sleep masks and sleep accessories on the market. And if you would like to have better sleep and better naps and try out Manta Sleep for yourself then click the link in my description and use code Luke at checkout for 10% off any of their products. Sweet dreams and thank you to Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. 
said, without further ado, let's get into my deep dive and recap of The Vampire Diaries Season 3, Part 3, covering Episodes 10 to 13, self-titled Revenge, Repercussions, and Reunions. So starting off with Episode 10, titled The New Deal, this episode begins with Bonnie walking into the abandoned witch house, and she can hear whispers from the spirits leading her somewhere as it gets louder and louder until she makes her way into the basement, where she sees four coffins. She's drawn to one specifically at the end, and she walks to towards it and opens it where she sees Klaus laying in it holding the necklace the one that belonged to the original witch Esther their mother that she then gave to Rebecca that Stefan then took from her and then gave to Elena the necklace you know it's iconic Bonnie then hears a noise and turns around but when she does she's woken up in her bed so it's another witch dream it's been a while since we've had a Bonnie witch dream but these usually lead to somewhere that's driving the plot so that morning Elena's running through the streets of Mystic Falls it's a really beautiful autumnal day but she starts to notice a man in a hoodie running behind her. She starts speeding up and so does he and she tries to cut a corner and he follows her. Eventually she thinks that she's lost him but when she turns around the guy in the hoodie bumps into her and apologizes so she thinks that he's following her. We cut to Elena having coffee with Bonnie at the grill saying that she feels like she's going crazy and that she's paranoid all the time because Klaus is out there and he knows that they try to kill him but he hasn't made a move yet. Bonnie talks about how she feels like she's going insane too because of her repetitive nightmare about the coffins with Klaus being in one of them. Bonnie asks Elena if she's heard from Stefan and she says that they haven't since he he betrayed them and that the Stefan they know is gone. She asks how Damon's handling it and Elena says, you know Damon, Damon's being Damon. So yeah, at the end of episode 9, Damon and Elena had had this conversation where he was really freaking out because he was like, damn, this could have all been over. Like now what are we going to do about Stefan? And Elena's like, we're just going to have to let him go. So she is kind of at this point where she's accepted that the Stefan that they know and love is no longer there. It's really heartbreaking. <laughs> but obviously this is why Stefan wants revenge from class because he's taken everything from him. We then see Damon at the bar at the grill getting day drunk and wants a lark to join but he's grading papers so he doesn't want to also the youtuber i justine the one who always made videos about like apple products and stuff she actually makes a cameo in this episode as the bartender so that's really funny but rick tells damon that he's actually there waiting for jeremy to come for his shift and he shows him one of his papers that he got an f on because he completely plagiarized it and didn't even try to hide it i justine the bartender is like you know that jeremy kid he got fired last week we then cut to the forest where we see jeremy and tyler getting drunk together and they're shooting beer cans with a cross bow interesting pairing considering like the beef that they had in season one and how like Tyler was like such a bully to Jeremy but it was actually Tyler's suggestion to Jeremy to help distract both of them from their breakups it's Jeremy's turn to shoot and he asks Tyler to move out the way but Tyler's being all cocky like I'm a hybrid man have at it take your best shot so he tries to shoot him with a crossbow but of course Tyler catches it with his super speed as if he wasn't cocky enough now he's hybrid level cocky and he reminds Jeremy that you can't kill him unless you rip out his heart or chop off his head so yeah I'm not entirely entirely sure why like it's I don't think it's ever really explained but hybrids can't be killed by being stabbed in the heart like regular vampires like their heart has to be ripped out of their head has to be chopped off it's such a random thing to add because like why <laughs> so back at the girl Elena's there she's gotten the news from Rick and she's leaving Jeremy a voicemail because she's really worried about him he's, he's been moody and not talking and failing ever since him and Bonnie broke up and Damon's playing darts like chill Elena he just sounds like every other teenager and she's like yeah well he's a teenager who's lost everyone he's loved but Damon reminds her her that Jeremy still has her. Elena then asks him if he's doing okay, what with the whole Stefan thing and considering, but Damon just switches to some flirty banter and she can't help but smile, but then they get interrupted when Klaus shows up to the grill. Things get tense and Damon's like, really? You're gonna have a smack down here at the grill in front of all these people? And Klaus is like, no, I just wanted to come to my local pub with my friend. And then the man comes in and it is the same man that was chasing Elena that morning and he like introduces himself to her. So this character is over here. So his name is Tony and he is one of Klaus. Klaus's new hybrids. Damon says that he's surprised Klaus stuck around, but he's like, you know, I happen to like this one pony town. And besides, my sister's missing. Have you seen her? And they like play all coy like they don't know where she is, even though, of course, Elena stabbed her in the back. And Damon has her chilling in the Salvatore dungeon. And he can tell by the look on Elena's face that she's uncomfy. So he's like, don't worry, this isn't going to affect you as long as everyone's well behaved. And she's like, what possibly more could you want from us? And he's like, well, let's start with Stefan. Where can I find him? He's stolen something from me. And Elena's basically like, well, that's your problem. He's your problem problem now and he's basically like well I'm gonna make it your problem too but at this point Damon and Elena are unaware of Stefan having stolen Klaus's coffins so we cut to Bonnie who goes to the amount of witch house that she was dreaming about and to the basement except this time she can't see any of the coffins there then Stefan shows up and she asks why he's there did he follow her and he says he did because he needs her help but she's not willing to help him after what he did to everyone but Stefan reveals to Bonnie how he stole all of Klaus's family's coffins and he needs her to help him hide them Bonnie thinks that's crazy because Klaus will just retaliate and start killing 
killing people if Stefan doesn't give his family back, but he says that that's Klaus's only weakness and with it he can ruin him. Bonnie doesn't feel like she has enough power to hide four original coffins, but Stefan says she's just gonna have to figure something out. So I've read the Gobert house and Lena and Rick have set up lunch to have a bit of a mini intervention with Jeremy. He walks into the house and they ask him to stay for lunch, but he says he's just passing through to grab some stuff and Tyler's waiting outside for him. Rick and Elena are concerned with Jeremy hanging out with Tyler considering he's been sired to Klaus, but Jeremy being a moody teen tells Elena that she's the last person who can lecture him about who he hangs out with, which I mean he kind of got you there. I understand Elena's just like always trying to protect Jeremy, but if my like sister who was like two years older than me was always on my case like this, I would be very annoyed. Then again, he is only 16 years old, he's gotta have someone looking out for him. And Elena's pissed with Jeremy saying like what's with the attitude, but he says he doesn't have time for this, and Elena tries to stop him, so he's like fine, we can all hang out, and he invites Tyler into their house, which obviously Elena and Rick are pissed about because he was not invited to come in before and now he has access to their home anytime he wants because of the whole vampire invitation rule thing. Some time has passed and Elena, Jeremy, Rick and Tyler are all sitting at the table. It's really awkward and quiet. So Elena breaks the silence saying how she thinks this is weird. Klaus has his hybrids following her and then all of a sudden here shows up Tyler at her house. Tyler starts to feel awkward and says he wants to leave but Jeremy tells him to stay. But Elena starts antagonizing him asking if he has to go check in with his hybrid master. Tyler's like it's not like that. So Rick asks Tyler what is the difference between being compelled and being sired? So Tyler gives us his version of the 411 saying compulsion is just mind control like hypnosis but being sired is something more like a faith it's like something you have to do because you feel it's the right thing so Elena questions if he believes serving Klaus is the right thing and he says he doesn't serve Klaus but he owes him his life for releasing him from the werewolf curse Rick asks the tale his old time parental question so if Klaus told you to jump off a bridge Tyler what would you do and he's like well I'm a, I'm a hybrid so I'd survive and Elena's like well if he told you to rip out your own heart and he's like he wouldn't do that and she's like what if he did and he's like well then I guess I'd rip out my own heart. And everybody's looking at him like, whoa, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> and Tyler's like, you're just like Caroline, going on about something that you don't understand. And Elena's like, yeah, Tyler, I don't understand. Klaus has terrorized everyone and you're just blindly loyal to him? Tyler's like, you're overthinking it, Elena. I can still make my own decisions. Oh my God, he is as brainwashed as they come. It's like he's in a cult. So over at the Salvatore house, Klaus has invited himself in and has arrived to have a chat with Damon. And they're bonding about how both of them can't find their siblings and Damon's like, oh, younger siblings, you never know what they're up to. So Klaus tells Damon about how Stefan stole his coffins and unsurprisingly, Damon's not willing to help. And Klaus is like, well, I can smell the vervain in your drink. So I know I can't compel you and he can't kill him because he's the one most likely to get his family back from Stefan. So he thinks that a demonstration is in order. And Klaus says, seems like you people respond best to displays of violence, which is kind of true. Like he always threatens them and they always call his bluff and then he has to get violent and then they finally give in. But Klaus calls someone and tells him, you know that thing I told you to do, mate? get on with it. And then back at the Gilbert house, we see Jeremy get off the phone. So one can only assume that he was on the phone with Klaus. So Elena asks Jeremy what the phone call was about. He says nothing. And Tyler goes to leave and Elena and Rick go up to the kitchen. They're like packing away the dishes and stuff. And they're chatting about how like messed up this whole Tyler situation is. And now he has access to their house and Klaus's hybrids are stalking her. And Elena turns around to go to Jeremy and is like, not a great model for you, but she notices he's not there. Rick then notices that Jeremy's left his ring behind on the dining table. They go to the front door and see Jeremy standing in the middle of the road, one Wondering what he's doing and then they see a car racing down the street towards him they run towards him telling him to move but jeremy is standing there in a trance completely still so rick pushes jeremy out of the way and he gets hit by the car elena goes to check on rick to see if he's okay he's wearing his ring so luckily he will survive this possibly but first she has to see who the driver was and the driver was that guy that hybrid that klaus has tony and he says to her there i go again bumping into people referencing when he bumped into her so yeah the person who hit rick with the car was supernatural so he his ring will help him. You know, this feels like a weird loophole because it's not like the supernatural person killed him with like their hands, like they killed him with the truck, but I guess like if they're behind it, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it makes me kind of wonder like if a supernatural person like put poison in his food and he died from it, like, but the poison was put in there like a week before, like, does he survive from it? Like, what are the lengths that we can go to? You know? The ring is very interesting. A lot of jewelry content this season. The necklace, the ring, the necklace, the ring. We then go to a new location in Mystic Falls, and it is Klaus's mansion that he has bought, stolen, who knows, and he is currently renovating it. He has his hybrids, like, compelling construction workers to do what he wants. He's like, bring in the light. I don't want this to be a fortress. This is a terrible Klaus accent. That's not how he talks, but you know what I mean. So Tyler arrives at the house asking Klaus if everything's 
okay. And Klaus is like, well, Alark got hit by the car and not Jeremy, but you know, it sends the message all the same. And Tyler's really confused, like, I thought you just wanted to send a message. I didn't think anyone would get hurt. But Klaus nonchalantly tells him that Elena's family will continue to suffer until he gets what he wants. Tyler's uncomfortable with this, but Klaus tells him he's gonna need to get over it. Because at the end of the day, human lives to them are just a means to an end. So then Damon arrives at the Gilbert house where Jeremy and Elena are waiting for Rick to wake up from his death slumber. <laughs> Damon asks Jeremy where his vervain is and he checks for his vervain bracelet to see that it's missing and Elena realizes that it's Tyler. He stole it from him. That's why he was hanging out with him that day to catch him off guard and distract him. Which is really sad because like Jeremy doesn't have a lot of friends. The one time he's hanging out with someone and they're just using him. Oof. Damon then updates Elena on why Klaus was doing this because of Stefan stealing his coffins and how he doesn't want to give it back. Jeremy gets really pissed off by this and says that they should just leave town because no matter what they do things never change and Elena goes off at him about things like school and work as if any of that matters when he thinks none of them are even gonna make it out of this town alive. And honestly he's got a point. I don't understand why these people haven't just left town yet. I mean I guess you could probably argue it's because Klaus would just follow them anywhere they went. Elena suggests to Damon that maybe they can give Rebecca back to Klaus as like a peace offering if they can't get him the coffins from Stefan and then maybe he'll like leave Jeremy alone but Damon thinks that's a terrible idea because Rebecca's just gonna kill Elena considering she daggered her. Elena takes a moment and realizes something and asks Damon how many coffins they were. She then calls Bonnie updating her on the coffins with Stefan and is telling her how it's similar to her dream but Bonnie tells Elena not to get involved but when Elena tells her that Klaus tried to kill Jeremy she gives in and says that she'll take her to where Stefan is. So Damon and Elena are walking up to the abandoned witch house and we learn through their dialogue that even though Bonnie lost contact with the witch spirits when she brought Jeremy back to life they're now communicating with her again because they want to help her hide Klaus's coffins because they want him dead. They both get inside the house and are calling out for Stefan but Damon starts getting stuck in the sunlight and he starts burning because you know how the witch spirits mess with his daylight ring because they don't want him in there so Elena tells him to just wait outside because she's not leaving until she speaks to Stefan. He reluctantly goes outside and Elena goes down to the basement where she finds Stefan and he tells her to just go away but Elena tells him that he needs to give Klaus's coffins back. Obviously Stefan doesn't want to do that but Elena tells him that Klaus is going to kill Jeremy if he doesn't but Stefan just takes a moment and looks at her and says that's not really my problem. Obviously this pisses Elena off so she slaps him across the face and tells him to go to hell. She leaves the house and goes outside to talk to Damon and he says he's going to try to do something about it but she's like how you can't get into the house and he's like don't worry about Elena just go home I'll deal with it. So she leaves and we see Damon vamp speed into the house and he's burning as he's running through the house thrashing himself against the wall in the shade grabs Stefan and drags him out to the front of the house and they start beating each other up. Damon wins the fight though by picking up a tree branch off the ground and stabbing Stefan in the gut and is asking him why he betrayed them why he turned on him with Klaus it just doesn't make sense. Stefan doesn't want to answer him so Damon keeps stabbing him. Finally Stefan answers him and tells him that Klaus's hybrids were going to kill him if he died and Damon is really pissed off by the stab Stefan again and is like how many times I have to tell you stop saving my life. I don't think it's that Damon doesn't want Stefan to save his life he's probably just annoyed that he keeps being indebted to him because this whole mess is all because he saved his life to begin with you know why he left with Klaus etc etc. Anyway so Jeremy finds Tyler in the woods drinking beer and he's holding up a crossbow towards him and he's really pissed about how he was just hanging out with him to use him but Tyler's trying to apologize to him saying he didn't know that Klaus was planning to kill him and he's like it's Klaus what did you think he was gonna do? He shoots an arrow with the crossbow towards Tyler he obviously grabs him and is like dude what the hell and he's like just think about it before you do whatever Klaus blindly asks you to do and as he's walking away Tyler tells him that Klaus isn't gonna stop until he gets those coffins back. So the Klaus and Stefan war over the coffins is really starting to affect everyone. And Stefan doesn't really seem to care because all he cares about now, ever since he like potentially turned his humanity back on, is he's just fully leaning into revenge mode because it's probably one of like the easier emotions for him to feel instead of all the guilt and the pain and the sadness. You know, that's usually what vampires in this universe cling to when they first turn on their humanity is revenge or anger or rage. <laughs> so Elena gets home just after Rick wakes up from the dead and he hasn't really healed properly and he starts coughing up blood and collapses on the ground. Elena freaks out realizing his ring isn't healing so she calls the ambulance. Some time passes and the paramedics get there. They're putting Rick on a stretcher to take him to the hospital. Elena's distraught but then that hybrid of Klaus's Tony shows up and compels the paramedics not to go anywhere. Obviously Elena's freaking out because Rick's dying but Tony tells her that he can heal Rick with his blood. All she has to do is invite him in. She obviously doesn't want to invite him in but at the same time it's like what do you do about Rick but then he ends up getting stabbed in the back by an arrow that was shot with a crossbow by Jeremy. Elena's like aghast by this and Jeremy walks in and tells her it isn't over yet. He goes to the kitchen grabs a meat cleaver off of the counter. Elena's like what are you doing Jeremy and she's like no as she chops off the hybrid Tony's head and blood splatters all over his face. Elena is just staring back at him like what in the hell my 16 year old brother just cut a man's head off. But yeah so Tony I don't even know why I put you on this board because you only survive 
survived less than an episode but you know you're dead bye <laughs> so back with damon and stefan at the abandoned witch house they're still fighting and arguing back and forth damon's like confused as to why he saved him like is the humanity switch on and off and he's also annoyed that he ruined the plan because they almost had him they almost killed klaus now what are they gonna do but stefan's like no there's got to be another way to kill klaus he doesn't just get to live forever so damon can kind of realize stefan's up to something with thinking there's another way to kill klaus and how he's got the coffins so he wants in on the plan stefan's a bit apprehensive but he's like come on if you keep saving my life you might as well make it worth it and stefan's like fine we can work together but elena stays out of it do not tell her what's going on they shake hands and the brothers are back on the same team so stefan walks into the house and tells damon to follow but he's like they don't really you know like me in there but he's like damon don't worry we're all on the same side so when he walks in he no longer gets burnt so the witch spirits are okay with him stefan takes him down to the basement and tells him to look damon's like there's nothing here he tells him to look again and then four coffins appear in the room that were not there before stefan says that the witch spirits hate klaus just as much as him so they're helping him hide the coffins so the coffins are in the basement but they're being hidden by magic but like they're not like invisible because like if someone just walked in there they wouldn't like bump into it it's like a cloaking spell i guess so it's like they're there but they're not there but that's all the info we know at this point so we cut to the mystic falls hospital after rick has been there and we get introduced to a new character dr meredith fell so if you clock that last name fell that is one of the founding families of this town so she's definitely gonna have some secrets up her sleeve some skeletons in her closet if you will dr fell is really confused as to how rick survived everything that happened to him and she wants to run some more tests on him but he doesn't want any more tests and he wants to leave and she stops him before he leaves asking what his secret is a guardian angel or did he sell his soul to the devil he smirks and says but of both now this probably seems inconsequential but it's not it's the start of something this is the start of something new well actually something sinister but i digress so klaus arrives to the salvator house per elena's request and he thinks it's to do with stefan but elena says that she couldn't get an answer out of him about where the coffins were but she has something else for him we then cut to the basement where elena opens the door to one of the salvator cells and inside is rebecca's daggered body and klaus looks at her like oh my poor sister so elena wants to make a deal with him that klaus will spare her brother for his sister he agrees but she says that he should know that when he pulls the dagger out of her and wakes her that elena was the one who put it in her so she'll come after her klaus says that he'll deal with his sister because obviously he needs elena alive because she's his human blood bag to make more hybrids but before klaus leaves he tells elena that he still needs her help in finding the coffins from stefan and she says that he's not gonna tell her where they are and klaus is like i may spare your brother but you don't have a shortage of loved ones elena so the question she should be asking is who's he gonna kill next if he doesn't get his coffins back elena at this point is just like defeated frustrated and pissed off and is like klaus stefan's not gonna give me anything he doesn't care about me or anyone you sold that you're the one who turned him into a monster and he's your problem now she goes to leave feeling triumphant and turns around and says to klaus you should know by the way that rebecca knows that you killed her mother klaus is truly flabbergasted at this point and this is really smart of elena because it kind of halfway ensures that he's not gonna wake rebecca because he doesn't want to deal with her wrath <laughs> so rick and jeremy are walking in the parking lot and they're chatting about the magical gilbert ring considering there's only two of them and both of them wear them and jeremy's like to rick so the ring brought you back to life but it didn't heal you and rick doesn't really have an answer as to why it's not working well but the reason he actually healed is because damon healed him with his vampire blood rick asks jeremy if he's okay because he can tell he's struggling and he says it just really sucks that the way that things are but it is what it is as a refresher remember at this point rick is basically elena and jeremy's guardian not like legally because elena is 18 but he was in a relationship with their aunt who died in the ritual and he also was married to elena's birth mother oh i love the connections so back in the gilbert house elena is cleaning some rags in the sink to get the blood off of everything damon comes in saying he took care of rick and asks if she's okay and she's holding back tears saying she got most of the blood out of the porch and he can tell that she's deflecting but tells her everything's gonna be okay there's a bit of a moment and then elena confesses to damon about her deal with klaus to give him rebecca he's really not happy about this but elena doesn't feel like there was any other option obviously because she doesn't trust stefan anymore she then breaks down about jeremy so upset about everything that's happened saying you know he's 16 he's just a kid he shouldn't have to live his life this way and she doesn't know what to do but she needs to fix it damon then holds her face and tells her that they will and you know what that means because elena and damon have done it before so back at klaus's mansion he's talking to rebecca's body we see that the veins are fading from her so he's obviously pulled the dagger out and he's welcoming her home and we see that her finger starts twitching so she's about to come to consciousness but he apologizes and sticks the dagger back in her heart and says we'll meet again sister so he's obviously not ready to wake her up and deal with the anger of her knowing that he killed their mother so elena was really smart in giving him rebecca you ate that one thing because we know elena's not usually the best at plans so elena goes with rick into jeremy's room to talk about what he said earlier about leaving town and jeremy says that he didn't mean it he was just upset then damon walks into the room jeremy's like really confused about this like intervention and he's like your sister thinks that we need to have another one of our chats again mm, okay i got a lot to say about this but let's just get through it so damon sits down 
Damon and compels Jeremy that he's gonna leave town and stay with some family friends in Denver. Rick tells Damon to tell him that he's gonna leave Mystic Falls behind and not think about it twice. Yeah, it's like really emotional and sad, but they've compelled Jeremy to just leave town willingly and not think about it and move on with his life. And I just, I have a lot to say about this because obviously Damon and Elena compelled Jeremy back in season one to forget about vampires and forget about Vicky dying and everything. And it was such a big plot point throughout the whole first season and even like a bit of season two as to why him and Elena really didn't get along because he was really pissed at her for stripping away his free will and compelling him to forget about the death of Vicky and everything and it just caused so many issues so I understand how she wants to protect him but compelling him again when you have already seen how much damage that did to him I personally just think is really unfair I'm just gonna put it out there I mean I don't know what other way they could keep him safe I mean he does have the Gilbert ring but then he got compelled to take it off I don't know it's a really tricky situation it really is but an amazing song starts playing in the scene it's that song that goes some prayers find an answer some prayers never know it's one door swinging open one door swinging closed it's holding on and letting go Anyway, so Stefan has taken Bonnie to the Amanda Witch House basement to show her the coffins, and she goes straight to the one at the top, saying that that's the one from her dream. She tries to open it, and it won't. Stefan says it can't open, and he's tried everything. And Bonnie says she thinks it's closed with a spell, but the witch has led her here, so whatever is inside that coffin can be used to make Klaus suffer. I love when the witch spirits communicate to Bonnie through her dreams. I definitely think my favorite instance of that was like the whole Emily Bennett storyline in season one, and when Emily Bennett um, possessed her body, that was that was tea. That was cool. Anyway, so back at the Gilbert House on the porch, I like. Elena is just really emotional after this whole situation and she's talking to Damon saying how she feels like a horrible person but he says that she's just trying to save Jeremy's life and she says she can't stop thinking about the last time they did this which I was previously discussing and Damon's like yeah and he'll get over it he got over it last time he'll get over it again and he says it's better for him to be estranged than to be dead and he's just so lucky to have a sister like her who cares so much. Elena thanks Damon not just for this instance but for everything and she says she doesn't know what she would do without him. It's a really sweet moment but Damon changes the subject telling her that Stephanie had a good reason to screw them over and that he saved Klaus to save them and he stole the coffins to get even. Elena's really confused by this and doesn't know what it means like is Stefan's humanity on or off but Damon's on a whole nother wavelength saying that he feels like an idiot because he thought that for once he wouldn't have to feel guilty for wanting what he wants. He's caressing Elena's cheek as he's saying it and she just looks at him saying she doesn't know what to say and he's like I get it brother's girl and all. He goes to leave but then he stops and it's like you know what if I'm gonna feel guilty about something I'm gonna feel guilty about this. He then goes up to Elena grabs her face and plants a big kiss on her and she leans into it and this is like Damon and Elena's first official consensual kiss. He pulls back, looks at Elena and says goodnight and leaves and she's just left standing there on the porch truly speechless truly gobsmacked she looks like she enjoyed it <laughs> but yeah that is the end of this episode it is our first official damon and elena kiss so the other times that they've kissed was when damon i think it was in the season two premiere when he killed jeremy when he snapped his neck he actually did like force a kiss on elena and she like pushed him off of her and then she actually did kiss him on his deathbed a peck at the end of season two but i would say that this like their first official like consensual mutual kiss so it's a big deal okay anyway i feel like i'm just going on a tangent so let's get into the next episode, episode 11, titled Our Town. So this episode begins with two scenes in cut together. It's Damon being really chippy, getting out of the shower, starting his day, because he's so happy that him and Elena finally got kissy-wissy. Elena is at Rick's loft, which has kind of turned into, like, home base for, like, the gym. Because, you know, she's out here in the gym, working on her fitness. Rick's her witness. Because mm. we know she's trying to be strong, so she can stand a chance against these vamps. Stephen goes into Damon's room, asking why he's so chipper. He's like, no reason. And Damon's like, well, hurry up and get dressed brother we gotta go meet bonnie at the abandoned witch house elena at rick's apartment is punching a boxing bag they're both talking about how they didn't sleep well and the reason rick didn't sleep well is because he's really concerned about the shelf life of the gilbert ring and elena's like well that's all the more reason we need to get jeremy out of town and rick talks about how well damon's compulsion worked because when he left the house jeremy was packing and talking about how excited he is to live in denver colorado elena asks if rick's spoken to damon today and he's like no why and she's like <laughs> no reason so we go to bonnie at the abandoned witch house basement getting really frustrated because no matter what spell she does the coffin will not not open. She starts hearing swishing the sound of like a vampire running around and she's like who's there? We see outside the Amanda Witch House is Damon and Stefan walking towards it. But Damon stops because he hears something with his vampiring. Back to Bonnie, she turns a corner to see Damon there and he's like shh. And then Stefan is still at the front of the house.
house and we see that this guy walks out the front door flashing his eyes and fangs towards Stefan so we can tell he's a hybrid but luckily Damon comes up from behind him and pulls his heart out of his chest and he dies so Bonnie arrives to the high school and Elaine is like where were you because she's decorating Caroline's locker because it's her birthday Bonnie lies to her saying she was just like practicing some spells that morning because because obviously Stefan doesn't want Elena to know about what's going on Elena then tells Bonnie about Jeremy saying how he's leaving town until this whole Klaus thing blows over and Bonnie's really shocked that Jeremy would just leave Elena here alone so Elena tells her about how she got Damon to compel him which Bonnie looks really shocked by but Elena says it's just to keep him safe but but she wouldn't let her know before he leaves because she knows that Bonnie and Jeremy have like unfinished business right so we go to Stefan in the basement of the abandoned witch house where Damon's like thrashing a crowbar against the fourth coffin and Stefan tells him not to bother no matter what they do it won't open and Damon's yelling out to the witch spirits like what good is it having you if you can't help us open it and Stefan's like none of this is going to be any use to us if Klaus's hybrids find our hiding spot we've got to get rid of them and Damon's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa Stefan we got to keep the peace try not draw attention to the very thing we're trying to hide from Klaus and Stefan's being really overzealous because he's like I have everything that Klaus wants and if he doesn't do as I say I'm going to drop his family at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean I think that's kind of funny that Stefan's threatening that considering that that is the lie that Klaus had told to Elijah that he had dropped their family at the bottom of the ocean so he's using his own game against it love that Damon reminds him of who they're dealing with and that Klaus will just kill them all if he does that Stefan thinks that Klaus is bluffing and Damon's trying to reason with him like you can only call someone's bluff if you're willing to lose everything if you're wrong but Stefan's looking pretty confident anyway back at the high school Bonnie goes over to Jeremy who's packing up his locker and she's like you weren't gonna say goodbye and he's like well I didn't think you'd want me to and she's like Jeremy I was upset about what happened with you and Anna but I still care about you and that she doesn't want him to leave town but Jeremy's all like well I think it could be a better life for me in Denver and he basically just repeats what Elena uh, told Bonnie Damon and compelled him and she's like well that's exactly what Elena said like word for word and Jeremy's like Huh? So she just lets it go. But clearly we can tell that Bonnie has issues with Elena getting Damon to compel Jeremy. That much is very clear. So then we go to Caroline who arrives to school, sitting in her car, looking really upset. When she gets out of her car, Tyler goes up to her. She says she doesn't want to talk to him. He's like, Caroline, wait up. And she's like, you almost got Jeremy killed, Tyler. And are you even trying to do something about your cyberbond to Klaus? And he tells Caroline that there's nothing that he can do about it. And he understands why she can't be with him, even though he wants to be with her. But that he's really sorry and he doesn't know what to say. And he gives her a little present and wishes her happy birthday and he walks away she opens it to see a cute little charm bracelet and she's really upset because I mean she loves Tyler and she wants to be with him but what do you do when your boyfriend has to do everything that this crazy hybrid who wants to kill all your family and friends says he has to do you know she's kind of in a rock and a hard place side note I've never really understood the appeal of charm bracelets they seem really uncomfortable but I digress no one's ever given me one before so <laughs> over at Klaus's mansion he gets one of his hybrid minions to take Rebecca's coffin away and then Stephanie shows up telling Klaus that he doesn't like his hybrids they're everywhere kind of like fleas and he wants them gone Klaus just smiles and sarcastically says to Stefan that he's hurt because he thought that when he set him free they'd pick up right where they left off so much for friendship but Stefan states the obvious like friends don't take other friends free will Klaus acknowledges that that was a bit extreme but he was feeling a bit moody just asked his siblings speaking of where are they Stefan goes back to the subject of him removing his hybrids from town and says he better do it or he'll remove them himself Klaus gets all up in his grill saying that if he continues to threaten him he's going to be forced to retaliate kill people then Stefan really leans into everyone questioning if his humanity is on or off and says he doesn't care if Klaus kills people or maybe he does maybe he cares so much that he might just drop Elijah into the Arctic at this point they're having a pissing contest and Klaus is like well I might be willing to lose one brother if it means killing yours and Stefan's like try me they're both staring at each other basically telling each other to f around and find out and then one of Klaus's hybrids Mindy comes in asking if everything's okay he's like yes Stefan was just leaving after failing to make his point but then Stefan goes goes up to a table where there's all this construction stuff, picks up like this like blade thingy majiggy and throws it across the room decapitating Klaus's hybrid and is like one down and walks away. So <laughs> clearly he proved his point, Klaus. The decapitation numbers are so high this season. So Caroline gets home and gets surprised by Bonnie, Elena and Matt who are like, happy birthday. And she's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, well, you missed our locker display at school. You never came. So we're just gonna bring the party to you. But Caroline says that she doesn't really feel like celebrating her birthday. They're really shocked by this. Bonnie's like you practically made it a public holiday but Caroline's clearly upset saying that now her birthday is just a reminder of the fact that she's dead so this is her first birthday since becoming a vampire so she's technically frozen at 17 and she's like the whole point of turning 17 was to get to 18 it's a filly year I'm stuck in a filly year like you know how Caroline's all about like being controlling and having life perfect right and she says she just wants to wallow in it but Elena's like you know what I have another idea so Tyler gets to Klaus's house like you called me here he then notices one of Klaus's hybrid minions cleaning up the other hybrid minions body and is like 
what happened and Klaus was like Stefan happened that's why I need you to do something for me to send a message he's like what do you want me to do and he's like you know your girlfriend Caroline I want you to bite her and he's like a werewolf bite is toxic to a vampire Klaus is like precisely well duh and Tyler's like what I'm not gonna do that I'm not biting Caroline Klaus reminds him that he's blessed with a side bond and has to do as he says but Tyler's like forget it man I'm not doing it so Klaus lets him go but smiles because he knows <laughs> so it's night time now and Damon and Rick have gone to another founders event they're walking up towards it and Rick's all like kind of founders meeting ever just be a founders meeting so they usually hide their like secret town council to get rid of the vampires um behind like sort of events in the town just to kind of give like a little revamp like a little update on the town council it's not what what it once was okay because now um the mayor of the town has a hybrid for a son the sheriff of the town has a vampire for a daughter right and they are both aware of this now it's no longer a secret and they're both in the town council and Damon who had once infiltrated the town council to keep his secret they know his secret now like they know he's a vampire it really is just a formality at this point you know <laughs> but anyway as they're walking in Damon is discussing Stefan's strange behavior to Rick and like how he's really confused about his humanity he thinks maybe there's like a dimmer switch now and Stefan very much is this you know Damon has said a couple times that his switch is fried because when other vampires turn off their humanity which we'll see later on throughout the show it's really obvious that it's off but with Stefan there's always like a bit of a gray area because he's turned it off so many times so it's like fried i don't know there's like a lot of lore when it comes to the humanity switch we even learned from rose in season two that as you get older it's just not even a thing anymore and Catherine even spoke to stefan about that so i find the humanity switch very interesting and we'll have a lot more discussions about it in season four anyway so the gang elena caroline matt bonnie they have shown up to the crypt in the cemetery in the woods and elena has brought caroline there because instead of giving her a birthday party she wants to give her a funeral to say goodbye to her old life and she's like here lies caroline forbes miss mystic falls head of the cheerleader it's basically really sweet way to like say goodbye to her human life and embrace her new life and caroline's kind of digging it so i really like this positive spin I mean, if you can make a funeral positive, this is what they're doing. So back at the town event, Rick is looking at a model of Wickery Bridge because this is a fundraiser to restore Wickery Bridge, which is the same bridge that Elena and her parents drove off of and her parents died on. And he even mentions that to Damon. And Damon's like, yeah, well, I'm just going to go and write a check to Carol and let's get out of here. And as Rick's standing there looking at the model, Dr. Fall comes over to him and is making small talk about how he's such a mystery patient and how he survived. And he's like, I guess I got nine lives. And she's says that that's not bad to have in a town full of vampires. He looks a bit confused like, honey, are you on the Founders Council? And she's like, well, I am the Fell, one of the founding families. I don't know why he didn't think of that. Like, if I was in this town, I would just assume every founding family was on the Founders Council. It is called the Founders Council, after all. She then looks at the model of Wickery Bridge and says she hates that bridge because her senior prom night dumped her on it. This may not seem important, but it is. So Damon finds Klaus chatting up Carol, really schmoozing towards her. She is such a flirt, honestly. And Damon goes up to her like, Carol, do you realize you've been kissing ass with an immortal hybrid who ruined your son's life? And Klaus is like, I reckon I saved Tyler's life. What with all that turning on the full moon? And he looks to Carol and he's so funny. He's like, you know, I only ever had to do it once, but I'm very sympathetic. <laughs> I love this man. They can never make me hate you. Anyway, Carol tells Damon that Klaus has promised to protect Tyler and the town, but Damon says that him and his hybrids are who the town needs protecting from. But then Klaus says that he would have no use for his hybrids if Stefan just gave him his family back. But then Klaus says that he's come to an agreement with the mayor that he'll stay out of the hair of the council if they stay out of his and the town will be protected if Stefan gives back his family. Carol implores Damon to get his brother under control because if not the council will be forced to intervene. Ooh so scary as if the council has ever made waves before. I mean they did do the roundup in 1864 but that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Catherine. They also did do that like attempted roundup at the end of season one but they kind of you know what they okay I'll give you that. You, you ate that one thing. You did kill all of the tomb's vampires, but you still had some vampires running around town. The back of the crypt, our underage baddies are getting drunk, and Elena sees Caroline texting on her phone, and she's like, Caroline, what are you doing? And she admits that she texted Tyler. Elena's like, Caroline. And then Bonnie's like, oh, give her a break, Elena. You can't control what everybody does. Everyone in the crypt go mute. And then Bonnie comes out and says that she just really disagrees with Elena getting Jeremy compelled. And she says she's trying to protect him. And Bonnie's like, you're taking away his free will. And Elena's like, please, Bonnie, you can't tell him. And then she's like, are you gonna compel me not to? She just storms out and leaves. 
leaves. Ooh, the girls are fighting. So back at the town event, Damon is talking to Liz, who's also drunk in the Klaus's Kool-Aid, and is like, I'm not gonna let townspeople die over a supernatural pissing contest, so get your brother under control. Then Rick overhears Meredith fighting with a man. And this man is a new character named Brian Welters. There he is over there. And we catch the part of the conversation where Brian says to Meredith that she's gonna ruin her career. And then she tries to leave, so he grabs her arm and she's like, let go of me. Rick goes in to save the day. Brian then tells Rick that he might wanna get to know her first before being her knight in shining armor because she's a psycho. He leaves and Meredith says, behold, my senior prom knight. And Rick's like, you really should have pushed him off for of that bridge. Mm -hmm. She says, unfortunately, she has to work with him on a regular basis because he's the town's medical advisor, aka the one who signs all vampire deaths as animal attack for the Founders Council. Anyway, Meredith gets a text from work and leaves. So then we see that Stefan has arrived to the event and he grabs a knife and follows one of Klaus's hybrids, this new hybrid. I don't care about these hybrids. Danny. He follows him into a private room, stabs him, and is about to chop off his head when Damon comes in and he's like, Stefan, what are you doing? No killing hybrids at the Founders Council. Stefan's pissed like, no, I told Klaus to get rid of his hybrids and he didn't. Now I'm sending a message. And Damon's like, you don't think he's just going to make more hybrids where they came from? And then more on top of that. Did you forget Elena's part in all of this? Klaus uses her blood to turn them. But Stefan's all bad guy now. Like, protecting Elena is your problem, Damon. And he's no longer compelled by Klaus to protect her, so he doesn't care. Damon says he doesn't believe that no humanity crap. And if he wants to beat the villain, he needs to be smart. And Stefan says, no, brother. To beat the villain, you have to be the smarter villain. And then he leaves. It really is interesting, though, to see see the brother role reversal, you know, with the past two seasons, Stefan always being the good guy, you know, trying to be safe and not have casualties, whereas Damon was always like a bad boy willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. He didn't mind being the villain. So it's really interesting seeing those roles reverse. So back at the birthday slash funeral party in the crypt, Tyler comes over like, sorry to crash the party. Matt's like, don't. And Caroline says it's fine. And Tyler just wants to pull it for a chat. So she leaves to go out with him. And when they do, Matt tells Elena that he just wants to see Caroline okay. He wants all of them to be okay, despite this crazy life that they're stuck with. Elena then talks about her fight with Bonnie, saying that she's right. She shouldn't be messing with Jeremy's head, but she just doesn't know what else she can do, and she doesn't want to lose anybody else that she loves. Cute, 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 etc. Outside, Tyler is chatting with Caroline in the woods, and he says he takes it all back. Klaus can't control him, not when it comes to her. But Caroline says maybe they're just not meant to be and they should move on, but he says that he loves her and he kisses her. I think I misspoke earlier. I believe this is the first time that Tyler tells Caroline that he loves her. So obviously, that's gonna like be a big moment for her so they both kiss but then he starts going towards her neck kissing her neck and she feels a nip and realizes that tyler bit her she's absolutely shocked because you know werewolf bite kills vampire and she tells him to just get away from her and she's just sitting there on the ground crying and tyler freaks out and leaves so i guess class does still control you tyler <laughs> back at the crypt elena and matt are wondering where caroline is and they're both drunk laughing at each other like caroline there's ghosts out here and then matt gets thrown against the wall like yeeted and knocked out. It's really funny. By Stefan and Stefan takes Elena and kidnaps her. So we cut to Stefan speeding in his car with Elena. Her phone rings. He grabs it and it's Damon on the phone like why do you have Elena's phone? And Stefan says he's making his next move because what's Klaus going to do if he can't make any more hybrids? He hangs up, throws Elena's phone out the window. Damon freaks out. Elena demands that Stefan lets her out of the car. He obviously doesn't. And then back at the event, Damon pulls Klaus aside into a private room, updates him on the Stefan and Elena situation. But Klaus doesn't believe that Stefan would actually hurt Elena. But Damon says he's not so sure because Stefan Stefan's acting crazy right now. Klaus calls his bluff saying that that kind of love doesn't die. And Damon says his brother just tried to behead someone in a public event. He knows his brother better than anyone and he has no idea what he's gonna do right now. So if he says blink, he suggests you blink. Oh my God, this is intense. Like the way Stefan's treating Elena, I just, it hurts my soul. Anyway, moving on. Matt brings Caroline back to the Forbes house where Liz is. He tells her about how Tyler bit her and he can't find anyone. No one's answering their phone. And at this point, Caroline has already started hallucinating. So the werewolf bite is really sick. It. One thing that does kind of annoy me, I just have to point out, is the timeline situation. How is she already hallucinating when she was just bitten, I'm assuming less than an hour ago, when back when Damon was bitten by Tyler in season two, it took like over 24 hours for him to start hallucinating. Maybe it's because he's an older vampire, so he's like a bit stronger. I don't Oh, maybe that is it, because it took Rose quite a while to feel the effects of the werewolf bite. I'm going to go with that. 
I need to, I need stuff to make sense in my mind. So back in Stefan's speedy car, Elena asks him what the plan is. Is he gonna kill her? And he says maybe he'll turn her into a vampire. Then Klaus might be able to make any more hybrids. Obviously, we know Elena does not want to be a vampire after everything that's happened. So she starts freaking out, banging on the car, trying to open the door, and is demanding, begging Stefan to let her out of the car. But he just ignores her as she continues screaming. He then calls Klaus and puts him on speaker so he can hear this ordeal. And they both play the same sing and dance about him wanting him to get rid of the hybrids and him wanting him to give him his family coffins back. Neither of them budge, so Stefan tells Klaus that he's about to drive his blood sores off of Wickery Bridge. Klaus doesn't believe him, so Stefan force feeds Elena his blood and tells Klaus no more hybrids if she's a vampire. Klaus calls Stefan's bluff again, and he tells him to try him because the coffins are next to go. Stefan starts speeding the car even faster towards the bridge. Klaus can hear the car, hear Elena screaming, and he finally gives in and tells Stefan, fine, you win. I'll send my hybrids away. Stop the car. Finally, Stefan does. Klaus hangs up the phone. So once Stefan has stopped the car, Elena gets out, and she's crying so intensely, saying to him, how could you do that, Stefan? My parents died on this bridge. I almost died on this bridge. You know that. You're the one who saved me. And like, I'm literally getting chills thinking about it because like, this was like the hardest she's cried so far this season. Like it is the pain in her voice. Like she, you can tell how truly distraught she is that Stefan of all people would do this to her. It's really like a full circle moment that he like out of all situations threatened to kill her in the way that he saved her from dying in the way her parents died. Like it's beyond, it's like there's levels to it. You can kind of tell by Stefan's face that he is a little bit shameful of his actions, but he says that he had to do it because Elena's fear sold it to Klaus. They argue back and forth and Stefan says that if he knows Klaus's weaknesses, he can destroy him. Elena's really shocked by this saying like after everything they've been through, is that all that matters now? Just destroying Klaus? Stefan says it's all he has left and Elena is still crying saying, you had me. But he says that he lost her the second he left town, she just hasn't admitted that to herself yet. She asks if that's what he's doing then, trying to make her hate him, and he just takes a moment, looks at her, and says, I don't really care what you think about me anymore, Elena. Walks off, gets in his car, and drives off, abandoning her on Wickery Bridge. Like, Stefan, it's getting really hard to defend you here. So over at the Forbes house, Matt goes to answer the door where Klaus is standing there saying that he just spoke to Tyler and he heard about the terrible accident. And Matt's basically like, cut the shit. I know you're the reason Tyler did this. He would never do it otherwise. And Klaus was like, Matt, I'm just here because I want to help heal her. And then Sheriff Forbes shows up and she invites him in because what other option does she have really? So Klaus goes into Caroline's room. She's laying in bed, sweating, looking on death's door. And I do believe that this is like Klaus and Caroline's first proper conversation with each other. He obviously knows of her because she She's in Elena's circle and they've crossed paths and whatnot, but this is like their first proper conversation and it is a very important one. So Caroline asks Klaus if he's gonna kill her and he's like, on your birthday, do you really think that low of me? And she's like, yes, because <laughs> why else wouldn't she? He looks at Caroline's wound on her neck and apologizes saying that it's not personal, it's purely collateral. He sits down on the bed next to her. She looks a little uncomfortable and he looks at her charm bracelet and says that he loves birthdays. She's like, yeah, well, haven't you had a billion of them? He chuckles to himself and says that as a vampire, you have to adjust your perception of time because you're free of it. Caroline says that she's dying and, and Klaus says that he could let her die if that's what she truly wants, if she believes that her existence has no meaning. He's thought about it himself once or twice over the centuries, if he's honest, but he wants to let her in on a little secret. And this is like an oddly romantic moment. He says to Caroline that there's a whole world waiting out there for her. Art, music, cities, travel. And then he looks at her in the eyes and says, genuine beauty. Mm, we know what that means. And he says that she can have it all and 1,000 more birthdays. All she has to do is ask. Caroline takes a moment and she's crying and she just starts getting emotional and says that she doesn't want to die. So Klaus grabs her head, bites his wrist, and feeds her his blood to heal her and wishes her happy birthday. And it's weirdly tender. It's like, like there's just something about this moment that indicates that Klaus, like, look, I don't want to say love at first sight because I feel like we're getting ahead of ourselves. But in this moment, you can definitely tell that Klaus has like instantly started feeling something for Caroline. And it's also like we've had moments that have humanized Klaus, like when we saw the flashbacks of him being abused by his father, but this is like the first time we've actually seen Klaus be kind. Now granted, she's in this position in the first place because of him, so how kind really is it? But still, it's a it's an interesting side to him for sure. So Damon has brought Elena back home, they're talking on the porch, and he says that Stefan won this round for them today. Elena's obviously not happy with his methods, but Damon's like, we needed it though. And I just feel like he's not being very compassionate to her situation, but he says that 
Klaus has been calling the shots and now they have the upper hand and it's all because Stefan was the better villain and he beat Klaus at his own game. You can tell Elena's kind of like a bit, mm, why are you so impressed by this? But Damon just caresses her face and asks if she's okay. And he's there for a moment and Elena says to him that he can't kiss her again. It's just not right. But he says, no, it's, it's right. Just not right now. Okay. So he says goodnight and leaves. So it's the next day still at the Gilbert house and Elena's saying goodbye to Jeremy because Rick is taking him to the airport. Bonnie shows up to the house and her and Elena lock eyes. Elena thinks that she's going to tell Jeremy the truth, but she just gives Jeremy a hug saying goodbye and looks over his shoulder towards Elena and they kind of like knowingly glance at each other at that. They're on the same page. So in Caroline's room, she wakes up feeling better and she sees a gift on her nightstand, opens it and the gift is signed by Klaus wishing her happy birthday and it's a diamond bracelet. So he's basically trying to one up Tyler on his birthday gift to her it kind of reminds me of an eclipse where jacob carved that like little wood bracelet for bella for like a graduation present and then edward gave her a diamond heart bracelet like they're like wanting up each other with their money <laughs> so then we go to elena standing on wickery bridge the same one she was at last night and matt shows up she thanks him for meeting her there and she says that she's been thinking about what he said the other night about them feeling stuck and he's like elena i was just drunk and upset and she's like no you're right i do feel stuck i've been holding on to the girl who had a normal life the one who was supposed to die on this bridge with her parents and Matt's like Elena you're not that girl anymore and it's okay if you want to let her go Elena's like is it because I kind of feel like I'm disappointing her like I'm just dis disappointing them my parents it's a really sad moment I'm like I just can't like I'm sorry when it comes to like stuff to do with Elena and her parents like I just it, it gets me it really does but Matt comforts her and says that she's doing a lot better than she thinks she is and he picks a flower off of the sidewalk and holds it up gives one to Elena and says here lies Elena Gilbert an amazing friend and drops the flowers into the bridge of the river off Wickery Bridge so Elena gets her own little funeral moment saying goodbye to her past life and welcoming her new one it's really sweet actually you ate that one thing Matt Donovan that one thing so then we go to Rick, who's drinking at the bar at the grill. Dr. Fell shows up and is like, another day drinker. I lost the patient. What's your excuse? And he says he put a kid on a plane. She's like, yours? He's like, no, long story. But she sits down and says she has time. So there's a little flirtation situation going on here. And our final scene for this episode is Damon walking with Liz Forbes in the forest. And she has brought him there to take him over to a crime scene. He sees that it's that medical examiner, Brian Walters, laying on the ground dead with a stake in his heart. And Damon's like, what's with the stake? He's not a vampire. And Liz is like, no, this was a murder. Not to jump too ahead, but this is kind of the start of this storyline. I haven't really addressed this yet. Anything that has happened over the past two episodes where you're kind of like, oh, why are you mentioning that? It's because I'm cooking. And if you know, then you know. And if you don't know, well, you will know. And it's a really exciting thing to know. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of this episode. Really pivotal episode, especially for the Stefan and Elena relationship of it all. And also for the introduction of situations going on between Klaus and Caroline. So big episode. Let's get into our next episode. Episode, though, which is a big episode for our beloved Bon Bon, episode 12 titled The Ties That Bind Us. So this episode begins with Bonnie walking through the graveyard in the forest past her family's tombstones. We see her grams, Sheila Bennett's tombstone, and she walks up to a coffin that she can't open. Then she hears a noise, turns around, and it's Klaus, and he says, I figured out how to open it. Have you? He vamp speeds towards her, sinks his fangs into her, and she screams. Everything goes black, and then she grabs her phone, hyperventilating, shines a torch, and realizes that she's stuck in the coffin. She's banging on the coffin like, let me out, let me out. And then finally, someone comes to open the coffin, but it's like, like really bright light so we can barely make out who it is but it is a woman and then boom she wakes up so it's another witch dream it's another one of those dreams slash nightmares that the witch spirits have given bonnie to send her a message and help her move forward with what she's got to do so in the abandoned witch house basement bonnie is showing elena the coffins telling her about her dream and elena's really surprised that they kept this a secret from her but bonnie says she didn't want to but if elena knew where the coffins were then klaus could threaten her to get to them and bonnie's telling her out of the four coffins that are there one of them we know is elijah and then the other two are Klaus's other two original siblings because remember Rebecca is at his house so the fourth coffin is the locked one that they can't get open. Then they hear footsteps coming and it's Stefan and he's really pissed off that Bonnie brought her here but Bonnie says she thinks she knows someone who can help her open the coffin and she needs Elena's help to find her and Bonnie says she couldn't place her face at first and then she realized she pulls out a photo shows it to Elena she's like oh my god Stefan looks at the photo and it's a little girl with a woman and he asks who that woman is and Bonnie says it's her mom. Oh finally we have been done 
dying for some Bonnie lineage. Everybody on the show has parents that we see except Bon Bon, and we have to wait till season three to get there. Julie Plek, what say you? So over at the Gilbert House, Elena and Bonnie are sitting at the dining table looking at a bunch of profiles that Elena was able to get from Sheriff Liz Forbes. She got profiles from every woman in the country named Abby Bennett Wilson, which is the name of Bonnie's mother. And she's talking about how surreal it is to track down the woman who bailed on her as a kid. And Elena tells her that she doesn't have to, but Bonnie says she has to because the coffin is shut with magic. It's a witch problem and she needs to find her mother to be able to open it. That's all that this is. Damon then walks through the door with a folder saying that he already found Bonnie's mom and that she lives in North Carolina. He says compulsion really sped up the process, so it's time for a road trip. But Elena doesn't want Damon to come with because this is Bonnie's first time seeing her mother in like 15 years and she doesn't want Damon to ruin it with his side commentary. He stands in front of Elena blocking her off. They kind of like have an eye off and Bonnie asks what's going on here. And Damon just blurts out, we kissed and now it's all good. After dropping that bomb, he says, have a great road trip and leaves. And Bonnie just looks at Elena like, excuse me? So Caroline gets home to find Tyler in her living room wanting to apologize. She says she doesn't want to talk to him or see him because he tried to kill her. He says because Klaus told him to bite her and he said no, but he did it anyway. Like it's completely out of his control. So that's why he had her mom call him. And then Caroline's father, Bill Forbes, walks out and she's like, daddy? So remember, Bill Forbes is like really anti-vamp. He's also like found a way to avoid compulsion over the years. And he also kidnapped and tortured Caroline to try and train her to not need to feed on human blood. It's a whole mess. Previous videos ago, but yeah, just to like put that into perspective, messy relationship here, right? So anyway, Tyler says to Caroline that since her dad found a way to resist compulsion, he thought he might be able to find a way to help him resist the sire bond. Caroline asks why her dad is going to help him. And Bill says because he made a mistake and he wants to make good now and he knows how that feels. So this is obviously Bill's attempt in apologizing to Caroline for what he did. So finally he realizes that it was wrong. So Rick's finished up lunch at the grill with Meredith and asks if they can have dinner next time. She says sure and leaves. Damon then shows up and sits with Rick after looking at Meredith and says she's hot. What's her damage? Rick's like no damage and he's like a girl that hot and smart there's damage. Honestly Damon can be so borderline misogynistic sometimes. Anyway Rick says he's been looking out for red flags with Meredith because her ex called her a psycho but Damon's like well if it comes from an ex it doesn't count. Rick says he wonders what his exes would say about him and Damon's like nothing because they're all dead <laughs> which is such a messed up joke but yeah like Jenna, Isabel, they are all dead. Rick says that her ex is the medical examiner, so he's dead adjacent. And Damon's like, he's the medical examiner? Oh, I think he's actually just dead. Oh, I forgot to put an X on Brian Walter. Damn it. I don't have one around. When I go off camera, I'll put an X on him, but he's dead. Damon tells Rick how Brian Walters was murdered with a stake like a vampire, and now Sheriff Liz Forbes is trying to hide it. Rick's shocked that Meredith didn't say anything, and Damon says that that's red flag number two. And if he was a cop, she would be his number one suspect. So Stefan gets home to the Salvador house where Klaus is sitting in his living room, and he's there saying he's wondering when he's going to get his family back now that his hybrids have left town. Stefan says, why don't you leave town for a few decades and then we'll talk. Klaus says he's going to give him one more chance to make a reasonable deal. Stefan threatens to drop his family in the ocean again and Klaus laughs like, ooh, crazy Stefan, the ripper who will do anything. How's that working out for you? Got any friends left? <laughs> the banter between these two, it just eats. So Elena and Bonnie are on their road trip driving to Bonnie's mom's house and Bonnie's processing seeing her mother again because she doesn't really remember her ever since she like abandoned her. She lives with her father Father, and she never called or wrote and she changes the subject to Damon and Elena's kiss. Elena says she doesn't want to talk about it and it's not going to happen again and before Bonnie can push the subject more she gets a phone call from Stefan and Elena takes the phone from her saying not to answer it and Bonnie's like if I don't he's just going to keep calling and calling all day. So Elena answers the phone and Stefan's like where are you guys and she says that her and Bonnie are going to her family's lake house waiting for Sheriff Forbes to send them more Abby Bennett profiles and she tells him to lay off of them and we cut to Stefan at the Gilbert house looking at the dining table with all the Abby Bennett profiles and the one that Damon showed them. So now he knows the address that they're going to. And he's like, okay, Elena, fine, and hangs up. So clearly Stefan's now coming after them. So Klaus is at the Mystic Grill and he's on the phone to his hybrid, Daniel. He's like, how's Mystic Falls without hybrids? He's like, boring. Are you clear on what you need to do? And he says he is. He hangs up the phone, gets out of his car, and walks up to a cute house, rings the doorbell, and a woman comes out and he asks if she's Abby Bennett Wilson. And she confirms that she is. So I kind of don't like that the first time we see Bonnie's mother in the show is through this interaction. It just doesn't feel as special as I would have liked it, but I digress. This is Bonnie's mom, Abby Bennett. She is beautiful, and this actress is actually married to the actor who plays Klaus in real life. So that's kind of some fun TVD lore. In fact, if you want some more TVD lore, the actor who plays Stan
Stefan, Paul Wesley, was actually married and since divorced. Tor I think her name is Tori DeVito, who plays Meredith Fell. So that's another lore. She was also in Pretty Little Liars. So that's another lore on top of the lore. If you get the lore, you lore. Anyway, some time passes and Elena and Bonnie arrive at that same cute house that Klaus's hybrid Daniel was just at. And when they get to the front door, a man comes up to them and Elena says they're looking for Abby Bennett Wilson. And he says that she's not home. And he looks at Bonnie for a moment and saying she looks so familiar. She says that Abby's her mom and he introduces himself as Jamie and invites them in. So this is Jamie over here. We'll get into how he fits into the situation in a little bit. As you can see, he has no lines connecting them. So Bonnie and Elena are sitting inside of the dining table while Jamie grabs them some water. Bonnie asks Jamie if they're related and he laughs and says no. Elena's like, good. Like giving a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink to Bonnie. He says that his old man and Abby used to date back in the day, but he's a deadbeat. So now Abby took him in. And then we hear a woman's voice, presumably Abby, walking into the house saying, Jamie, whose car is out front? She turns a corner and makes direct eye contact with Bonnie. And Bonnie's like, that would be mine. And she introduces herself and Abby's just like speechless. I mean, she's seeing her daughter for the first time in 15 years. Oh. I wonder if you would recognize your daughter from like a toddler to like almost an adult. That would be interesting. So over in the Lockwood underground cellars, Bill is helping chain Tyler up. And Caroline's asking why he thinks that this will work. Bill goes on saying that the brain is a muscle. The more you use it, the more you can do. The sire bond is about one thing, gratitude. Tyler believes that he owes Klaus his life. So he has to get to the bottom of why. Tyler goes on about how he was cursed to break every bone in his body to turn every full moon and Klaus freedom of that. So Bill says, well, to break the sire bond to Klaus, Tyler, you're going to have to turn and own the pain so you're no longer grateful to Klaus. Caroline asks how he can turn when it's not a full moon, but Bill's like, well, you're a hybrid, right? You can turn on free will. Tyler says he doesn't know how to just start it. And Bill's like, well, you're making excuses. And he's like, you don't understand. When I turn, I break every bone in my body. And Bill's like, how badly do you want your freedom, Tyler? So Tyler takes a moment, focuses, closes his eyes, and then opens them, flashing his amber eyes. And his bones start breaking, and he begins the transition process. So back at Abby's house, Bonnie's looking at a graduation photo of Jamie, and Elena asks how she's holding up. And Bonnie says she's not here to get her mom back just to get her help. So she's trying to like keep her walls up so she doesn't get hurt clearly. Abby comes back into the dining room bringing them some food and Elena tells her she has a beautiful home. So Abby's like, you're so sweet Elena, just like your mother. Elena's a bit taken aback by this, like you knew my mother. And Abby says that Miranda was one of her best friends. Bonnie's pissed off at this point saying, so you had a daughter and a best friend and you still left town? Abby tells Bonnie that her best friend is the reason she left town. 15 years ago, a vampire came to town looking for Elena, looking for the doppelganger. No one could manage to kill him so she lured him out of town and performed a spell to desiccate him in a crypt in Charlotte. That's when Elena realizes that she's talking about Michael. So it's all coming together, right? So I'm assuming Michael was looking for the doppelganger so he could use Elena to lure Klaus to town and kill him. Abby reveals that it took every ounce of her power to take Michael down and it almost killed her. She recovered, but her powers never came back. And Bonnie's like, and neither did you. Abby's like, Bonnie, it's not that simple. And Bonnie just gets up and says that this was a mistake. Abby has no magic, so she can't help her. She goes to leave, but Abby runs after her and stops her, saying that she wants to talk to her. Elena says she's gonna leave to give them some space and wait outside. But when she goes outside, she hears some noise, turns around, and Stefan sneaks up on her. Why am I doing acrobatics here? So Demi goes to the Mystic Falls Hospital to talk to Dr. Fell. He's sarcastically apologizing for her ex-boyfriend's death, and she's like, thanks, I'm still processing. He says he just came by to tell her that it wasn't actually an animal attack, but of course she would know that considering she's the one who signed the death certificate. Meredith takes Damon into a private room asking why he even cares, and Damon says because Rick's his friend and he wants to make sure she's not a psycho. Meredith's really insulted that Damon would insinuate that she would kill her ex-boyfriend, but says that if he really does care about a lark, he should probably find out how he came into the ICU one night on death's door and walked out one hour later without a scratch. Damon's like, whatever, and goes to leave, but Meredith injects him with some vervain. When he passes out from the vervain and falls to the ground, she grabs a syringe and draws out a vial of his blood, but he starts to wake up, so she puts it in her pocket and leaves. Hmm, suspicious. So Bill and Caroline are watching Tyler starting to transform into a werewolf. Tyler's really distressed and in pain, and Caroline obviously doesn't like to see that, so she asks her father if he can take a break but bill says that he's doing it this way and if she can't handle that she should just leave and tyler insists that she leaves as well so she does but then bill picks up an axe and starts cutting tyler with it he's like swinging it around cutting him it's so crazy tyler's like what are you doing man and bill says he needs to get angry so he can turn because his sire bond to klaus is putting his daughter in danger so either he turns right now or he kills him so tyler's motivated by this and starts turning into a wolf at like two times speed so i guess hybrids can control how fast they transition into a wolf but it's just like the pain is kind of probably what holds them back a bit. So back at Abby's house, she's complimenting Bonnie on what a beautiful woman she's become, and Bonnie's like, enough with the pleasantries and the muffins. Just tell me the truth why you never came home. Abby says that she had no magic, I was in a new city, and realized she had a chance to start somewhere else. As Abby Bennett, the woman, not the witch. And she starts getting emotional and is like, I'm not proud of what I did, 
scared of running away. But you have your dad, Bonnie, and your grams. And let's face it, your grams are so much better at this than I am. Bonnie just looks at Abby in the face, just like blank stare, and is like, oh, you don't know. And Abby's like realizing what she's saying, that her mother is dead, and asks her how it happened. And Bonnie tells her that they were doing a really tough spell. It took a lot out of them, her more so than her. And Bonnie starts getting emotional as well. It's really sad. Imagine like your mother having been dead for a year and you didn't even know. That's crazy. They're both emotional together. And Abby says that her grams really raised her right and she'd be very proud of her. She then asks Bonnie what brings her to her. And she says that she had a dream that made her think that she was supposed to help her, but with no magic, she's not sure anymore. And Abby says, yeah, she may not have magic, but there's other ways that she can help her. Bonnie's like, I don't know, and Abby just insists that she gives her a chance. So outside Stefan's going off at Elena, he's really pissed at her for going rogue, saying that this is exactly why he didn't want her involved. In a fit of rage, Stefan starts breaking stuff, then Jamie comes out and is like, whoa, what's going on here? Stefan grabs him by the throat and compels him to leave, and then Jamie comes back and shoots Stefan with like this big rifle in the chest with wooden bullets. So back inside the house, Bonnie and Abby hear the gunshot noise, Bonnie goes to the window to see what's going on, and Abby comes up behind her, grabs her, and puts a cloth over her mouth, and Bonnie starts like, you know freaking out but she passes out so she chloroformed her chloroformed is that is that what it is where they make you pass out either way there's some fishy stuff going on with abby and jamie so Demi goes to rick's apartment and gives him the 411 on how meredith vervained him and bloodjacked him after his visit to the hospital to talk about her dead ex rick's really pissed at damon for going after her saying that he could handle it but damon says he should be thanking him because he's proved that she's a psycho so back with elena jamie's tied her to a pole so she can't move and stefan's laying on the ground in agony and he's not healing so there's obviously wood chips still inside of him then then Abby comes out of the house calling out for Jamie and Elena starts freaking out as she sees Abby dragging Bonnie's unconscious body to the car. Messy messy, not exactly the best mother-daughter reunion. Back with Tyler, he's almost finished completing his transition and he's getting really strong and starting to be able to pull the chains off of the walls and tells Bill that it's not going to hold him and he needs to leave. Bill's a bit apprehensive at first but when Tyler yells at him, he starts to go but it's too late because Tyler has turned into a wolf and we know that when they turn into wolves they lose all control and he attacks Bill. So it's nighttime now and Abby has pulled her car over to the side of the road where we see Klaus's hybrid Daniel waiting for her. So obviously Klaus and his hybrid are behind everything going on with Jamie and Abby. So Abby updates Daniel about how Stefan showed up but Jamie took care of it and how she didn't have a chance to ask Bonnie where the coffins were and she was definitely not going to tell her now. But Daniel tells her that she just needs to keep trying. Bonnie comes out of the car and asks Abby what she did to her. Abby says she'll be fine. It was just a few herbs that knocked her out but she shouldn't try any magic because it's muted it. And she tells her that she needs to tell her where Klaus's coffins are. Bonnie doesn't want to tell her obviously and Abby says that if she does doesn't, that man has compelled Jamie to kill himself. Bonnie like, sorry, like, ah, this is so much bigger than me. I don't know what you want me to do. And Abby's talking to Bonnie like, please just tell me where they are and no one needs to get hurt. As she's typing into her phone, warn your friends, and she shows Bonnie the phone so that she can read it because obviously otherwise Daniel will hear her communicating with his vampire. So back at the house, Stefan's still on the ground, writhing in pain, and Elena asks Jamie to let him go. And we can see from behind that she's slowly breaking free of the rope, and he tells them both not to move. He says he doesn't know why he shot Stefan, but he knows that if he moves again, he's gonna have to shoot him again. Elena, realizing that he's been compelled, asked Jamie who gave him the gun and what they told him to say. Jamie said some guy came around, gave him the gun, and told him to shoot anyone who gets in their way, and if Abby doesn't get a hold of some coffins, then he needs to shoot himself. Elena asks what the man told Jamie to do with her, and he says that the man told her not to hurt her, so Elena, finding a way through a loophole, is like, well, are you sure about that, Jamie? Because these ropes, they're really, really hurting me. So because of the compulsion, he goes to loosen the ropes, and she's already about to break free, so she pulls out, grabs the gun, hits him over the head, and knocks him out, and goes to Stefan and asks what she can do to help. Stefan says that there's like wood chips that are scraping against his heart and he can't get them out. So she has to dig her hand into his chest cavity and start pulling out the pieces of the wood from the bullet. Messy, messy. So then we cut to Damon walking down into the basement of the abandoned witch house, but the coffins are not there. But you know who is? Klaus. So obviously Abby told him the location of the coffins, right? Klaus starts going off at Damon for hiding in the squalor behind these witches. And then the witch spirit starts frying his brain and Damon's like, don't insult them. And then Klaus starts screaming at the witch spirit saying, funny thing about witches, living or dead they protect your own and i have no problem having my hybrid killing off the remaining better bloodline if i don't get my coffins back the witches stop frying his brain and then three coffins appear before him but there's one missing and can you guess which one it is the locked one klaus asks where the other coffin is and, and damon says see we only had time to hide one of them klaus threatens to kill him and damon says if you do then you're never gonna get that coffin back and suddenly tells him that klaus wants what's in that coffin a lot more than he wants him dead i really love the damon and klaus scenes because damon just has this confidence about him like he just knows that klaus isn't gonna mess 
mess with him. He just goes in knowing that he's got the upper hand. I love that about you, Pookie. So Rick goes to the Mystic Falls Hospital to talk to Meredith about her stealing Damon's blood, and she says that she's not crazy, and he can stick around to find out how. She then walks him into a room where there's a patient, and he's like, is that Bill Forbes? So Bill Forbes is like mangled up, right? And she's like, this is an actual animal attack, and he's gonna die unless I have something to do about it. She pulls Damon's blood out of her pocket and injects it into Bill, and she says, you wanna know my secret, Rick? I'm a doctor who hates when people die, so I cheat. So that's why she stole Damon's blood, because she takes vampire blood and gives it to her patients so that they don't die, which honestly, like, I kind of get it because, like, it's such an easy way to heal people, but then if people die, you have a bunch of vampires running around. Mm. So back with Elena and Stefan, after she's finished pulling the stuff out of his chest, Stefan's really impressed with Elena having done that and dealt with Jamie, and he's like, you've changed. You've gotten stronger. And Elena says Stefan's not the only one who had to change. They all had to. There's a bit of silence, and Elena comes out and says to Stefan that she feels like she has to tell him something, not because she feels guilty that it happened, but because she feels guilty that he doesn't know. And she tells him that she kissed Damon. Stefan is completely speechless and is just having a really human moment and just walks away. Mance doesn't even know what to say. I feel like he's like, I can't blame her, but at the same time, I'm breaking on the inside. So after some time has passed, Elena goes up to Stefan where he's just sitting by his car processing everything. And she asks him to just say something. He says that he should have never kidnapped her. The car and the bridge, he took it way too far. But she shouldn't have lied to him today either. She can't do things like this when Klaus is still alive. She says that she knows that, but she just wanted to give Bonnie a moment with her mother without everything else getting in the way. And Stefan's like, ah, oh, without me getting in the way. She's silent, doesn't answer the question, changes the subject back to Damon and says that she didn't plan on kissing him. Stefan says, Elena, you're better than him. You're better than both of us. And he gets in his car and leaves. It's very much if I can't have her, no one can. <laughs> but no, I do truly think that Stefan probably agrees with that. He's probably looking at his behavior, Damon's behavior, and is like, Elena, just don't have either of us. So still on the side of the road, Bonnie has gotten off the phone and tells Abby that Elena is on her way and that Jamie's okay. She breathes a sigh of relief. Bonnie says she kept her end of the bargain up and Klaus usually does, so he should leave her alone. Bonnie then says to Abby that she was willing to do all of this for Jamie when he's not even her family. But Abby says that Jamie is her family and she knows that that's difficult for Bonnie to understand, but it doesn't mean that she doesn't care about her too and that she wants to help her. But Bonnie says she has no magic and she doesn't trust her. Abby says that when she put Michael down, her magic didn't just disappear. It drifted away the longer that she was away from Bonnie, the weaker it got. Like nature was punishing her for abandoning her own daughter. And maybe even though she doesn't want her magic back, she would do it to help Bonnie. So I find that really in a way kind of beautiful that the witch spirits punished Abby by like making her magic get weaker as she stayed away from Bonnie longer because like you abandoned your daughter and like bloodlines are really important with witches but now as a way to make amends to her she's like I don't want my magic back but I'll get it back to help you and I think that's really sweet. I like that. So Tyler goes to the Mystic Falls Hospital, check on him, Bill, make sure that he's okay. And he's like, I am, no thanks to me though, realizing that he's obviously been injected with vampire blood, which he's not a fan of. Tyler apologizes for hurting him, but Bill says he knew the risk and they'll continue tomorrow. Tyler's really surprised by this, like what I turn and Bill's like, once to break the sire bond, you're gonna have to turn over and over again till it no longer hurts. Tyler says he can't put himself through that again, but Bill says until he can act on complete free will, he's not letting him anywhere near his daughter. So Rick has brought Meredith back to the Gilbert house, considering that she told him her secret, he's gonna tell her his secret. He opens up a duffel bag, shows her his weapons, and reveals that he's a semi-retired vampire hunter. And she's like, while we're talking about secrets, how did you survive being hit by that truck? Rick then pulls out his hand, showing her his ring, saying that it protects him from death by a supernatural. She's impressed, and it's real flirty, you know, they're sharing secrets about their twisted lives, and they start kissing, but then they get interrupted when Elena walks through the front door. Meredith just smiles and leaves, and Rick apologizes to Elena, and she's like, Rick, it's okay. And he's like, no, Elena, like, this is your parents' house. It was Jenna's house. But Elena's like, and now it's your house, Rick. We needed you and you stayed. And I know it's hard with Jenna gone, but you're allowed to move on. And it's a really sweet moment because a lot of what Rick has been struggling with this season, feeling like a lost cause, drinking, I mean, he always does that, like, just being a mess, is the grief that he had, you know, dealing with his girlfriend Jenna's death, but also the fact that he was prevented from being able to help her. You remember in season two when they locked him in the house, etc., etc. So Stephen gets to the Salvador house, walking towards Damon silently, and Damon tells him how he only managed to get one of the coffins, the locked one, and he's looking at Stefan wondering why he's being all quiet, and Stefan punches him in the face. Damon's like, oh, okay, I take it you and Elena had a little heart to heart. Well, why don't we go ahead and talk about this instead? He then pulls a dagger out of his pocket, revealing that he pulled it out of one of Klaus's siblings. But which one? So we cut to Klaus's mansion, where Klaus's hybrid Daniel is pulling his coffins into his home, and he asks Klaus if he's gonna wake them up now, but Klaus says, not yet, I've still got unfinished business to take care of. And then he sees Daniel start to choke blood with a hole ripped through his chest, 
he falls to the ground, and who is standing there holding his heart but none other than Elijah Michelson. Boom! Clap the sound of my heart. So yeah, the original sibling that Damon pulled the dagger out of was none other than Elijah, who we haven't seen since the season 2 finale when he betrayed our gang when he was supposed to kill Klaus during the ritual because Klaus said he, the family was still alive and he could take them to him, but then he tricked Elijah by daggering him and put him in a coffin. So we have got some catching up to do with Elijah Boo Boo. Anyway, that is the end of that episode. Full on stuff, right? I'm a little bit sad that Bonnie's reunion with her mother was quite tainted. We still have some time to make amends. So let's get into our next episode and our final episode for this video. Season 3, episode 13, titled Bringing Out the Dead. Mm, I love this episode. So this episode begins right when the last one ended off. Elijah notices that Klaus is very surprised to see him, so he can obviously deduce that he's not the one who pulled the dagger out of his chest. So he van speeds over to him, throws him back, and they both start fighting. Klaus says to Elijah that he did keep his word in reuniting him with their family. Well, technically that's true, he tricked Elijah because the way that Klaus reunited Elijah with the family was by daggering him and keeping him in a coffin as well. As Klaus is fighting with Elijah, he pulls open one of the other coffins and pulls a dagger out of one of his other siblings and threatens to stick it into Elijah. Elijah dares him to do so because then he'll have Cole to deal with, the sibling he pulled the dagger out of. Klaus holds down the dagger and tells Elijah that Michael, their father, is dead. Elijah takes this information in but asks Klaus why their siblings remain in coffins then. Finn for over 900 years, Cole for over a century. Klaus says because Stefan Salvatore holds the one thing keeping him from waking his siblings. And that there are things that Elijah doesn't know about their past, about their mother's past, but he's ready to tell them now. He only asks that he remembers the oath of loyalty they once took. He puts the dagger back in Cole and says, always and forever, brother. And that he needs his big brother Elijah to stand by his side to destroy Stefan and make their family whole again. So he's placing all the blame on Stefosi. Anyway, family reunion aside, the next morning at the Gilbert house, Elena comes down to the kitchen where she notices that Rick is getting up off the couch super hungover. And he's saying how he feels weird about last night, but Elena reminds him that he doesn't need to feel weird about inviting Meredith over. He thanks her, but says that he does feel guilty for drunk dialing Meredith at 2am last night. And he doesn't remember any of it. Clock that bit of info for the future. <laughs> then the doorbell rings and they answer it to see Sheriff Liz Forbes. Liz is talking to them about the dead medical examiner, Brian Walters, and how he was staked in the heart. And she pulls out the stake that was used to kill him, which is in an evidence bag. And Rick recognizes it, saying it's one from a set from Elena's parents' lake house. And Liz says that's why she's here and she hasn't told anyone, because when she ran the stake for Prince, the only ones found was Elena. Which is peculiar, because why would Elena kill the medical examiner? So after some time, Liz has left, and Elena and Rick are on the phone with Damon. And Elena says that the sheriff doesn't actually think that she did it, but she does want to know why the killer is using her family's weapon. Damon says Rick should ask his doctor friend if she had access to the weapons. And while Rick is unpacking a bunch of his weapons on the table, he says that he only showed those weapons to Meredith last night, and Brian Walters was killed days ago. Damon and Rick argue back and forth about Dr. Fell, but Elena refuses to believe it. She doesn't want to think that the girl that Rick is interested in is actually a psycho. Can't believe he has that bad luck with women. They wonder who else it could be, because Rick says that he stashes weapons everywhere. The trunk of Damon's car, here in the house, over at the school, why are you keeping weapons at the school, in his loft. So really, it could be a number of people. And Elena wonders if it might be Stefan, considering he was crazy that night. But Damon's like, that murder is not exactly his style, you know, because if Stefan's gonna kill someone, he's gonna feed on them. We see Damon walking outside through the woods, and he says he has to go because he's meeting up with an old friend. He hangs up, and we see that that old friend he's meeting up with is none other than Elijah Michelson. Elijah says that when he woke, he found a note in his pocket from Damon, and Damon records the note, saying that he wants to discuss their mutual destruction of his brother Klaus. But the scene cuts, so we don't actually get to see their conversation. We then see Bonnie and her mother Abby walking with a pistol of Stefan through the Lockwood tunnels. So he's pissed because they gave over the coffins to Klaus, but they still have one left, the mystery locked one, and it is in a cave that Stefan can't enter because it's in that part of the cave that has that boundary that vampires can't get through. So he wants Bonnie and Abby to dig deep and figure out a way how to open the coffins. So Stefan leaves them, and as he gets to the entrance of the tunnel, Elena's waiting there for him, saying she found his location from Bonnie because she wants to talk to him. He doesn't want to talk to her and goes to leave, so she flat out asks him if he killed the medical examiner. He stops and asks Elena why she would ask him that. She says it's because she doesn't know what he's capable of anymore, and then Stefan asks Elena if she's asked Damon if he's killed anyone recently. She's speechless, so he walks away. Things are not good in Stelena land, guys. So we cut to Caroline at the Mystic Falls Hospital. She's thanking Meredith for taking care of her dad, and she says, well, could you ask him to lay off because he spent half of the night threatening to get my medical license revoked. Caroline says that her dad's not a fan of vampires, so he's not exactly psyched that vampire blood is what healed him, and she asks if she can take him home now, but Meredith says she already signed his discharge papers last night just to shut him up. Caroline thinks that's weird because he never called her, and Meredith says that it must be hard when your dad hates the one thing you can't change about yourself. Caroline looks a bit shocked, but Meredith says that she makes a habit of knowing who all the vampires are in town for medical 
sexual curiosity, aka stealing her blood, but that she doesn't blab. She leaves and then Caroline walks and turns around a corner to Elena, saying that it's weird her dad already left, and by the way, Meredith is nice, she seems perfectly normal, and she thinks it's sweet that Elena wants to check up on her for a lark, and Elena's like, well he's my family, I just want to make sure, you know, he's not dating a psycho. <laughs> but Caroline stops Lena from talking because she's ringing her dad's phone and she can hear with her vamp phone that his phone is somewhere in the hospital. She follows the noise to a medical supplies closet and Caroline and Lena walk into it to find Caroline's dad Bill laying on the ground with a knife through his chest, dead. She starts freaking out and then Elena says, Caroline, he's got vampire blood in his system. And then Bill wakes up from the dead. <sighs> so back in the cave, Abby is looking at all of the drawings on the wall telling the story of the original family and she asks Bonnie what they are. And Bonnie says, it's a story about a mother who loved her children so much that she couldn't bear the thought of losing them so she turned them into vampires. One of which is Klaus. Bonnie's flipping through Abby's grimoire saying that there's nothing in there that can help them and that there is a page ripped out of it. Abby says it's the spell that she used to seal Michael away and she got rid of it. But she does point out the spell on the page behind it but Bonnie says that that's a sealing spell the opposite of what they're trying to do. But Abby points out a symbol on the page saying that it's a blood knot which requires two generations of the same bloodline to perform it. Bonnie realizes that if they do the spell together they could unbind it go unseal the coffin. Okay, that's witch talk. <laughs> so Damien walks into Stefan's room telling him that him and Elijah have organized a dinner party with Klaus. Obviously Stefan doesn't want to go and he says that he doesn't want to strike a deal with Klaus, but Damon says that they don't have to. They're just using this as a distraction so that the witches can get the coffin open. Stefan's pissed that Damon's trusting Elijah because he's already screwed them over once before when it comes to Klaus, but Damon thinks that undaggering Elijah was smart because he's in vengeance mode towards Klaus and besides he trusts him just as much as he trusts Stefan now. Stefan gets up in his face saying it goes both ways brother and Damon asks if this is about him kissing Elena again. Because if it wasn't for Klaus, then Stefan wouldn't have become such a dick and then that kiss would have never happened. So he should get ready to fake a truce. <laughs> so back at the hospital, Caroline's hiding her dad in a room because he's now in transition and he's like, you know, freaking out as you do when you wake up from the dead. Elena says that she already called Liz and she asked Bill if he saw his attacker, but he says he didn't. They came up from behind him when he was trying to sneak out of the hospital. Caroline says they'll figure this out, but in the meantime, he needs to feed. But Bill says he's not gonna drink any blood. And Elena says, but if you don't, you'll die. And he says he knows how it works and he's prepared to do that and he says he needs to leave the hospital because it reeks like blood so he doesn't want to complete the transition so this will be interesting because this is the first time in the show i believe where we'll see someone not want to complete the transition so it's nighttime now at the gilbert house and rick is doing inventory of his weapons and elena has brought the bloody knife that was used to kill bill which is obviously not a great thing because she just stole a weapon from a crime scene but he needs the knife because he looks at it and realizes that it's from another set that belongs to the gilbert family weapons how many weapons do they have and rick recognizes that the knife is from the duffel bag that he showed Meredith the other night and that the stake that was used to kill Brian Walters was in the trunk of Damon's car the night that Meredith was also at the Wickery Bridge Foundation. So now Rick and Elena are thinking that Meredith must be the killer. So Stefan and Damon arrive to Klaus's mansion for their dinner party with him and Elijah and there are compelled waitresses there and there's a lot of animosity because obviously Stefan doesn't want to be there and Klaus is being passive aggressive towards him because the whole coffin situation and Stefan's being aggressive aggressive towards him. <laughs> and Damon's being all cocky about having woken Elijah up but Klaus isn't bothered saying that him and Elijah always make it through. Stefan then makes a jab about Klaus's relationship with Rebecca and asks where she is. Last he checked, she was still daggered because Klaus was too afraid to face her. Klaus then says that if Stefan's insinuating about their mother's death, he's already come clean to Elijah. And Stamen tells Stefan to dial down the judgment because remember he killed their father. <laughs> but Stefan says he's in no mood to kiss Klaus's ass. I love this dinner party. I would highly recommend watching this episode just to see the dinner party between these four. It's so entertaining seeing the way that they bounce off of each other and their different approaches. It's really fun. Anyway, back to the Forbes house. Caroline is sitting on her porch with Elena saying that she can't get a hold of Tyler and how she's really surprised that Rick thinks Dr. Fell might have been the one to kill her father. And she asks what Elena thinks about it and Elena says she just wishes that the woman that Rick liked wasn't in the middle of all of this. Caroline then ponders on her parents being in the same room saying that they haven't been in the same room together that long since their divorce. With everything going on, Caroline's mind is all over the place and she's becoming paranoid and she asks Elena if Tyler could have been the one to kill her father because he has to do everything that Klaus says. But Elena doesn't think it was Tyler. Caroline then says, well, she's not gonna let her dad die she's gonna force him to feed but Elena says that her dad doesn't want to and all he has now is his choice. Caroline starts crying saying that she hated her dad so much for what he did to her but now all she wants to do is save him and Elena's like of course you do Caroline he's your father and Caroline asks Elena what the worst part of it was when her dad died and Elena says just realizing that he would never be there to like watch her grow up see her graduate see her get married all the things that you need your dad for. It's so sad I'm getting really emotional. Oof. Anyway then Matt shows up after hearing the news gives Caroline a 
hug to comfort her and this is obviously a really big moment for the two of them because they have not really connected or spoken much this entire season ever since their breakup in season two and Matt's been really distant towards Caroline also because she's now was dating his best friend. Anyway on a somewhat lighter note back at the double brother dinner party Elijah is making small talk with Steph and asking where the beautiful Elena is tonight and he says I don't know why didn't you watch Damon and then Klaus starts laughing saying oh you've just missed so much brother. Stefan gets pissed off saying another word about Elena and this dinner is over. Klaus says that he's just so amazed by the allure of the Petrova doppelganger and he asks Elijah if he should tell them about Tatia. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna get into this you know how I love my doppelgangers. This is a doppelganger that you will only meet if you watch the Vampire Diaries spin-off the originals but they're giving us a bit of the backstory on Tatia here. So it turns out Elijah and Klaus were both in love with the Petrova doppelganger Tatia. Their mother sought to end their feud over Tatia and killed her and used her blood in the wine that they consumed the night that they were turned into vampires. So this makes a lot of sense as to why Elena's, well, the doppelganger's blood in general is so integral to stuff to do with the original family, Klaus's hybrid curse, and just other stuff that will come up because their mother, Esther, who turned them into vampires, used Petrova doppelganger blood to turn them into vampires in the first place. So it's all interconnected. I love it. Anyway, so Klaus says that him and Elijah eventually realized the sacred bond of family and moved on from Tatia and rejoined with each other. So this is really interesting because this obviously speaks to the parallels of Damon and Stefan, what they already went through with Catherine and now what they're going through with Elena. So I really like this conversation. But I also just can't imagine Klaus being in love with a Petrova doppelganger with the way that he treats Catherine and Elena. I just can't imagine it. Anyway, so back in the caves, Bonnie is getting really frustrated with Abby saying that she's not trying and that's why the spell isn't working. And Abby says that the spirits are angry at her for leaving Bonnie. They don't want her to have her powers. But Bonnie says the spirits gave her those dreams for a reason. They wanted her to find her because she's her mom and that the spirits are not getting in the way she is. It's a really emotional moment and then Bonnie opens up to Abby about how her dad and her grams never spoke about her. She has no memories of her mother and it was actually easier to just pretend that she was dead than to have to wonder why she never came back for her. Oh my god I'm getting chills. Like how could you abandon like well so Bonnie's like 18 now 15 years ago. How could you abandon your three-year-old daughter? I just oh. It, I, I, I can't. I'm sorry. I just, I can't forgive Abby for what she did to Bonnie. I just... <sighs> Abby's getting really emotional saying that there's no way she can express how sorry she is but Bonnie says that there is. She can help her. She then holds Abby's hands and they perform the spell, the incantation the flames all soar into the sky the spirits whisper, the cave starts to shake and it all stops. Bonnie then checks the coffin and sees that it's jiggling and says it's starting to loosen so they're getting closer and that she's gonna go call Damon to update him. So she leaves because she obviously needs to go somewhere with cell signal and Abby is there alone. It's really like creepy and eerie. She's looking around and she starts hearing some weird noises and then the coffin the lid just flies open and Abby screams and cut. So we still don't know what's in that goddamn coffin. Oh, this scene really got me. There's a lot of emotion, um, a lot of emotional parent stuff this chapter with Bonnie and her mom and now Caroline with her dad. Like when it comes to the parents in the show, like I just, I can't, it's too much. <sighs> As someone who has issues with parental figures, like it really hits me where it hurts. Anyway, back at the dinner party, Elijah wants to discuss the terms of their agreement. Damon says that they'll give Klaus the remaining coffin, and in return, Klaus and the rest of the original family must leave Mystic Falls forever. Elijah thinks it's a pretty fair deal. Klaus says he's not going to leave Elena behind when her blood ensures that he can make more hybrids to defend himself. See, this I don't quite get. I don't think the writers, like, developed the hybrids enough. Klaus is talking about them. I went through so much effort to make his hybrids so, like, he wouldn't be alone, and so that he would have his soldiers. But you never really see him develop a meaningful friendship with his hybrids nor do his hybrids actually like defend him that much they're not very successful they're dropping like flies they all end up dead he didn't take the time to train them to be good soldiers so i just feel like instead of making so many he should take the time to make them better soldiers i don't know i digress anyway klaus says besides he wonders if he did leave elena behind how long it would take for one of them to turn her into a vampire or for her to die with all their feuding because the worst thing for elena is the two of them Ooh. Ooh, that's messy boots. Look, he's not totally wrong. There are a lot of issues that come into Elena's life because of the Salvatore brothers, but also if they weren't in her life, they wouldn't have been able to help and defend her from her inevitable fate with Klaus. Just saying. So don't come for my boys too much. Not too much on them. Anyway, Klaus then feeds on one of the compelled waitresses and asks Stefan to join him for a drink, but he does not. So Matt's walking Elena home and they get to her porch and they're talking about how much they've all lost. And Matt says that he feels like this town is cursed. 
okay, then leave. Literally, what is holding you back, Matt? He's always complaining about the town. Get out then. Get out. Anyways, they get into the Gilbert house and Elena goes to turn on the light, but it won't turn on. So she goes to the kitchen to get some flashlights because she, I got everything when I got you and I. So to the nothing in my flashlight. Getting me, getting me through the night. Um. Anyway, so she then notices when she turns on the flashlight that there is blood on the wall and on the floor. There's like bloody hand marks everywhere, like puddles of blood all over the floor. And like idiots, Elena and Matt follow the trail of blood and handprints on the walls up the stairs where they find in the dark with their flashlights, Mr. Alark Saltzman sitting on the ground with a knife in his gut not conscious oh my god everyone just keeps getting stabbed <laughs> elena's obviously freaking out but when she goes to touch rick he wakes up and she asks if he knows who did this he doesn't and he says that elena needs to kill him elena tells matt to hang up and says that rick's wearing the gilbert ring so if he dies a supernatural death he'll come back matt's confused saying we don't know if the person who did this thing was supernatural and elena's like that's what he's saying we don't but i'm a doppelganger that makes me supernatural she grabs the knife holding it up and matt's like elena are you crazy and she's like i don't know what else to do matt he's dying so elena reluctantly takes the knife out and stabs stabs it in Rick's heart, ergo killing him. Could you imagine how traumatic that would be? Anyway, so back at the dinner party, Damon and Elijah have come back after they stepped up for some air while Stefan and Klaus have just been arguing back and forth. And Damon asks if they're gonna make a deal or what, but Klaus says he's gonna counter their deal with his offer, which is to ensure Elena's future happiness because what she needs is to be rid of the two of them. He says that Elena should get married to a nice human. I don't know, what about that blonde football player? <laughs> Seriously, Matt Donovan? And he's like, yeah, why not? They'll get married, have a couple kids and live a long, happy, human life. Stefan knows what Klaus is on about. He just wants Elena to continue the Petrova doppelganger bloodline, because then in a couple generations, Klaus will have another doppelganger, ensuring that he'll have an endless blood supply to make more hybrids. But Klaus is like, that's a small investment in ensuring her well-being, and after you hand over the coffin, then I'll keep her safe for the rest of her natural life. And he's like, you know it's what's best for her. He stands up, holds out his hand, and asks Stefan if they have a deal. Stefan goes over to Klaus, grabs his hand, and says, no deal. Klaus breaks one of Stefan's legs with his foot, pulls his arm into the fire, and starts burning his hand. Damon goes to help, but Elijah grabs and holds him back, and Klaus says that Damon better get him that coffin before he burns Stefan alive. And he tells Elijah to go with Damon to get it, and when he comes back, he'll make good on his promise and hand over their family. They never learn not to mess with Klaus. Mm -mm. Anyway, back at the Forbes house, Caroline goes to her room where her dad is looking at all of her trophies and their memories together, and he sits down on the bed saying that he's feeling really weak and tired. Caroline asks if there's anything that she can do for him, like maybe call Steven, which is his partner. And he's like, no, I just tell him when it's all over. Yay, guys, a crumb of gay representation. <laughs> anyway, Caroline tells her dad that he can still change his mind and that he's strong enough to handle being a vampire. But Bill says that his strengths are all in his beliefs and becoming a vampire is wrong because people aren't supposed to cheat death. Caroline gets really upset by this and starts yelling at her dad saying, how can he hate who she is so much? But Bill gets up and holds Caroline and says that he doesn't hate her, he loves her. She's beautiful and strong and good. And after everything that's happened to her, she's actually who he and her mother hoped she would always be. <laughs> so sweet. Caroline's pulling her eyes out and she says, then don't leave me, daddy, please. Oh my God, I really don't want to... Oh, Bill is holding Caroline, comforting her, and he can see Liz in the doorway crying, watching them. And he says, honey, parents aren't supposed to outlive their children. This is life. This is what it means to be human. Why? Mm, it's too much. It's too much. I'm sorry. When Candace King, honestly... The actors on the show but there's something about when candace cries it just gets me same thing when bonnie like does her like these my girls when my girls are crying i'm not happy okay anyway back at klaus's mansion stefan tells klaus to just kill him because you'll do it anyway when they bring the coffins back but klaus is just taunting stefan for giving up asking where's the ripper <laughs> but then elijah and damon show up and klaus asks why they haven't left yet elijah says they forgot dessert and one of the compelled waitresses walks up to klaus with a tray lifts the lid where there are three silver daggers laying on the platter Ooh. Klaus is shocked and Elijah says that he's learned not to trust his vulgar promises and that they're doing this on his terms now. Then their brother Cole walks in, introducing Cole Michelson. He's walking towards Klaus and Klaus is like, Cole, please. Klaus tries to vamp speed away from Cole, but then he gets blocked by their other brother, introducing Finn Michelson. And he's like, please, Finn, no. And Finn stabs Klaus through the hand with a dagger. <laughs> As Klaus is screaming, he vamp speeds in the other direction, but gets blocked by Rebecca, who's back from being daggered. <laughs> and she says, this is for our mother and stabs Klaus Klaus in the gut with the dagger. Finn and Cole then grab Klaus by the arms, holding him back, and Elijah tells Damon and Stefan to leave, saying, this is family business now. Ooh, this is such a sleigh, the way they just all walked in. Elijah just continues to eat, he continues to serve, like he is gagging us all the time. Anytime Elijah's on screen, like you just don't know what to expect, because he's so like moral and honest, but when he's gotta, when he's gotta get down to business, 
he's gonna do what needs to get done. I love this scene so much. But oh my god, the way we just like fully have almost unveiled the whole original family. This is exciting. <laughs> After this, we get a little montage with some nice music. We see Caroline crying in bed with her dad's body and her mother walks in and Bill is now dead. Back at the Gilbert house, Elena and Matt are waiting for Rick to wake up and she'll ask Matt if she'll stay and wait with her to see if Rick wakes up because she can't lose any more family and Matt holds Elena while she cries. Now don't get too comfortable, Matt. <laughs> So Damon and Stefan are walking home through the forest. I guess they didn't drive there. <laughs> and Stefan admits that Damon was right about bringing Elijah back. And he asks why Damon came back because he could have just left him there. Class would have killed him and then he would have had Elena all to himself. Damon then gets a call from Elena but doesn't answer it and says that he didn't do that for Stefan. Stefan says that he loves Elena and Damon says he loves her too. And they both walk away. We're really getting into the thick of the love triangle here. I feel like before the way that Stefan was treating Elena so horribly, he still thought that she would like always just wait for him. But now that Elena has actually kissed him and it's all starting to feel a bit real for him so now he's going to be on the defense <laughs> also before i forget let's put our ex on bill forbes because he has now passed away r.a.p i don't really feel bad for him i didn't like him but i do feel bad for caroline it's not nice <laughs> seeing her in pain. Anyway, back to the Gilbert house, Elena is on the phone with Sheriff Forbes, who says that Meredith Fell was in the operating room all night. So that's her alibi. She couldn't have been the one to stab Rick, but that this is now the third member of the Founders Council to be attacked, and she no longer has a suspect. Rick then wakes up coughing blood, so Elena hangs up the phone and she holds him as he comes back to life. So Damon and Stefan make it into the Lockwood tunnels to the cave, where they see Bonnie passed out and Abby passed out and the coffin open empty. Our final scene is at the Michelson mansion with Klaus and all of his siblings that are now awake. Rebecca's like, I really like what you've done with the place, Nick. And she starts like smashing expensive vases and stuff. And Klaus is like looking very teary eyed saying, I wanted this to be for us, a home where we could all be a family together. Finn says that they will be a family together, but not with Klaus. Rebecca says, we're leaving you, Nick. Right after she kills that doppelganger bitch. So she wants her revenge on Elena. And she's like, you're now going to be alone forever, Nick. Klaus gets mad by this because you know his fear is being alone. And he says, if they run, he will hunt them down. And then Elijah goes up to him, gagging him as Elijah does, saying, then you'll become the exact thing you have hate our father. True tea, true tea. Klaus has a screaming tantrum, you know how Klaus gets, saying, I'm the hybrid, I can't be killed, I've got nothing to fear from any of you. Elijah's like, you will, brother, when we get our hands on that coffin. They all stare at each other, but then they hear the sound of a door opening, and we see Klaus's face shocked and gobsmacked, like, he literally looks like he's seen a ghost, because in some way he has. Because guess who steps through that door, but none other than the walking Esther Michelson. Gagged! <laughs> Klaus ripped their mother's heart out a thousand years ago and here she is walking looking like she's from a thousand years ago based on her fit but she was the mystery she was who was in that coffin it's so good rebecca's gobsmacked too because we know how she feels about the death of her mother and she's like mother but her mother just like looks at all the kids but goes straight to klaus and klaus can't even look at her he's looking at the ground and she's like look at me boy do you know why i'm here and klaus is crying saying to kill me and she says no i'm here to forgive you and she turns to the rest of her kids and says i want us all to be a family again. Boom. End of the episode. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Like all the originals, just like the way they really didn't hold back. Like we just got all of them coming back at once. Look at, look at this. There's no more question marks. We know who they all are now. Like they're all here. And this is where we're going to get into some good. Mm, I, sorry, the originals this season, we're ramping up, we're ramping up, we're getting there. But that that's that's the end. That's the last episode I'm discussing in this video. This was a fun one, okay? It was, like I said, very emotional when it comes to the parents, everything going on with Caroline and her father and Bonnie and her mom. I really loved everything to do with the Stefan and Klaus revenge and how they were going back and forth about the coffins. I thought it was a really fun story arc, really interesting to see what's going on between Damon and Elena and like now how Stefan feels about it, what he did with her and Wickery Bridge. Like, the love triangle is triangulating and Elena's got very complex feelings towards both of them. We now have this interesting storyline with Rick and Meredith and like who is this mysterious serial killer in Mystic Falls that is hunting down founding family members, founders from the council. That's another interesting plot point. So we're really ramping up things in season three. There's a great set of episodes and we've basically unveiled, well yeah, we've unveiled pretty much almost everyone on the board. We only have two more characters to unveil. Um, we have this character here who's a new character and then we have the Mystic for serial killer who was someone on this board and who died this episode we had bill who died brian walters who died um we also had a couple hybrids who died but yeah that's where we're at really fun really fun if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below your thoughts i would love to know of course i'll be coming out with another season three vampires video soon ish covering the next four episodes i'm gonna try to get that to you as soon as possible and then after that we have a neck another video for season three covering the last five episodes of the season i'm really excited for 
for what's to come. But of course, if you want more Vampire Diaries content from me in between my YouTube videos, you can always check out my Patreon as I post a companion Vampire Diaries series over there where we actually watch the scenes together, break them down, break down certain storylines, and discuss the characters, their relationships, details over there. So if you want to check that out, please do. Link is in the description. I have three different tiers that I think are pretty affordable. But of course, if you can't afford to join the Patreon, that's fine. Um, thank you so much for just being here, watching my videos, supporting me. Subscribe, turn on the bell to see more videos. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this one. And shout out to my patrons and shout out to all of you. And shout out to the sponsor of this video, Man to Sleep. Reminder, if you click the link in my description and use code Luke, you can get 10% off on any Man to Sleep product at checkout. And thank you guys so much. Once again, that's it for me in this video, guys. Woo, been a good one. But without further ado, guys, I hope to see my next video. And I hope that you have a great day or night wherever you're on the world. Bye.